Hello, and welcome to another episode of Will and Mike Explain the Movieverse. I'm Will. I'm Mike. And yeah. today we are watching Hook. In honor of the uh, horrible and, and great tragedy that is the passing of Robin Williams. We thought this one would be a really good idea. And plus it's a movie that we've all seen a hundred times. And love it or hate it, it's still a classic. It's going to be forever known as the best Peter Pan movie. I don't care what anybody says, because this is probably the best Peter Pan movie I've seen to date. I think so. It's it's definitely up in my, you know, top two or three. And um, not only... Th oh. Low battery. It's okay. Not only that, but they also have a new Peter Pan in the works, where instead of Captain James Hook, it is Blackbeard. And Blackbeard is played by none other than Hugh Jackman himself. Wolverine, that's Wolverine. right. Wolverine. So we thought that might be another good reason to look back on this classic, too. Definitely. But um, we are going to go ahead and hit play. So if you're watching along with us, uh, we have the logo there for TriStar Pictures right before the movie starts. So I'm going to go ahead and start it in three, two, one, Yahtzee. start. It should be starting. Yeah, it looks like it's going. So <clears throat> we have Hook. A 1991 production by... Anybody? Anybody? Steven, Steven Spielberg? Spielberg. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I didn't know this was going to be a pop quiz. <laughs> uh, writers, the writer of the book is J.M. Barry. And Carrie Fisher actually helped with the final modification of this screenplay. That's what I thought was pretty cool when we were researching this, was just finding out that Carrie Fisher actually had a lot to do with making of it and stuff like that. and apparently she even has a cameo in it that I've never noticed before. Absolutely. We start off on a scene from Peter and Wendy where Robin Williams' daughter is playing Granny Wendy. Apparently we have one of Dustin Hoffman's children in this play, one of three of his children that will all appear in this play or in this movie itself. Like we said, it's, it, it's crazy looking back on it just how many little cameos and stuff like that are in this movie. But um, I remember when I first heard about this movie, I swear I was in a trailer for, uh, or I saw the trailer when I was in the movie theater for, I didn't even know what was out, like Wayne's World or something probably. I mean, it was like 1991 or... Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm sitting there and I remember seeing it and it, it made this big deal with this big score and there's all these flashings and stuff like that. And you see this hook come on screen and then the title said, Hook. And I remember... My 10-year-old brain sitting there looking at it going like, yeah, that was a hook, all right. Like, so what? Like, what's that movie? I don't even care. Bring on Wayne's World or whatever. Maybe it was Coneheads. I don't even remember. Right. But, um, but uh, it, it was my brother who later told me, like, yeah, it's supposed to be about uh, Captain Hook and Peter Pan's all grown up and he's going to be played by Robin Williams. And, you know, of course, I knew who Robin Williams was. And, and I, I know, like, the, the prospect of it seemed really exciting. And then I never even got to see it until it got out on, on home video. And, like, all my friends had already seen it. And they'd all sit there chanting, Rufio, Rufio, Rufio. And I'm like, who the heck's Rufio? You know? so, Dante uh, Basco? I think that's his name. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember when it, when it came out, and I think, I think my parents had rented it or bought it or something like that. But I'd been waiting all day, like, through school. I didn't even care about homework or, you know, like, what, what was going on in classes or what fractions I was learning that day. Like... I just wanted to get home, which really, truly was like a walk up three huge hills because we lived <laughs> on the side of a mountain, and, and I just had to rush home and, and see this movie, so. But anyway, uh, here we are past the first scene. It looks like Peter Pan's kind of a dick right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's because it's Peter Banning right now. Right. You had to be, look, there's Cartman. <laughs> Some kid Dude in the crowd like. had like a stocking cap that was blue with a little yellow ball and it looked exactly like Cartman's head. I don't even think IMDB knows, knows that there was a Cartman cameo in this <laughs> show. What I liked about the beginning of this is that when you're seeing the play being done by these children, uh, Peter Pan in the classic role is played by a woman. By oh a yeah, yeah, just like it was in the original stage play. Yeah, which makes me wonder... If this is just like another interpreta interpretation of Mrs. Doubtfire, and that's actually just Robin Williams' real character, you know? Because, <laughs> I mean, Peter Pan's being played by a woman. Man, that is, that is so meta. Like, it's just a weird callback to... Well, I think Mrs. Doubtfire came after this. Didn't yeah, it, it or... definitely did. Like... So maybe that was the inspiration for it, you know, besides Tootsie and Dustin Hoffman and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't know. 
Wow, the movie verse is a strange and complex place. I don't know. I'd have to agree with Robin Williams. Like, well, look sometimes at those cell dressing like a woman is just fun. As Eddie Izzard has taught us all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, man, look at those cell phones. <laughs> this takes me back. Like, back then, you knew that you were really important if you had a cell phone, but now we all have them. In fact, we're doing this podcast on one. Right? <laughs> Which reminds me, please look at our Kickstarter and fund us so we can get better equipment. <laughs> but no, I, we, we got some stuff in the works, so we hopefully the next few episodes of the year will be of much greater quality, even though uh, it's amazing the great little studio we get out of this tiny little iPhone. Definitely. I'm actually looking into uh, buying a computer. Uh, there's a local company, PC Laptops, that offers some very good guarantees on their equipment. Up to five years, uh, parts of labor is free, upgrades on equipment is free. It could be kind of pricey. They start out, they say they start out at about seven ninety nine, but hmm. that's a lie. <laughs> How much of this do I have to pony up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, pro- I'm doing it for my personal, day, for classes and everything. We'll talk off the air, I guess. We will but, talk off but, the air. Um, yeah, uh, so some of the fun things that I always liked about this movie was um, just, I mean, it, it, one of the things that makes it good is the juxtaposition and the, the character arc that Peter goes through. And it's it's fun after, you know, we all grew up with, like, maybe the, the Disney Peter Pan, and, you know, we all kind of know the basic story. So to watch this guy who's, like, like in the Disney one, he's flying everywhere, he's flying all the time, he's, you know... He's, he's flying just to hang out and talk to Wendy. He like, can fly, he can fly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like the song says. And it's, it's, um, it's, it's fun to see him, like, even inside a room. The guy was flying all the time. And here we have this, uh, this old guy, uh, you know, Peter Banning. Not a and, ginger anymore. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> um, but uh, must be some kind of black pixie magic involved there. But he, um, Dang pixies. but, but he's, he, he's not only not flying all the time and has forgotten how as a grown up, you know, like we all tend to do as we grow up and, and, you know, stop using our imaginations or whatever. But it's, it's the fact that like, he's even afraid of flying. I mean, we're to the scene now where they're flying in an airplane and he's scared to death. And it's, it's hilarious to see like, right here, I have to interrupt you because the pilot has just come over the intercom and he's like, this is your captain speaking. The voice that you hear is that of Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. <laughs> so it makes it really funny that he's the captain of this airplane, but he's also Captain James Hook. Oh my gosh, yeah, I didn't even ever pick up the on that. The most subtle things that you miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until you had to go back and like reread it. And oh my read. gosh, look at them drawing his daughter's <laughs> She's kind of a psychopath. Oh, at least they're all safe. Oh, except him. Oh, I guess that's another character development. His kids don't care about him. Maybe they will by the end of the movie. <laughs> He just doesn't know how to be a kid. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's the big lesson, I guess, about not, not just Peter Pan, but specifically this movie is, you know, like, I guess we all have to grow up eventually, but don't lose that childlike wonder and your imagination and your happy thoughts. You know? Definitely. So stay young. Stay happy. Stay healthy. So this kid, he was in, like, What About Bob? He was in and, What About Bob. And I know there was some other movie, but I remember a couple years ago watching these movies and wondering, like, whatever happened to that kid? But I guess he just ended up, like, going off to college and didn't really want to be an actor the rest of his life. And I think now he's, like, some kind of awesome engineer or something. Kind of like Haley Joel Osment. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. He reprised his role, or finally came back into acting in Kevin Smith's Tusk. Which I highly recommend, um, <laughs> we, for the faint of hearts. <laughs> I, I'll tell you guys, we almost watched Tusk this time, but I, I had to put my foot down just <laughs> just this one time. We'll, we'll get to it. I wouldn't be surprised if we did a podcast about it in the near future. But We may even have to make it like a special <laughs> NC-17. <laughs> <laughs> okay, his son in this right here, where he's like banging the freaking baseball in the window and knocking the air masks down. If he did that on a flight these days, they would probably eject that little kid. That's a good they point. They would give him a raft and say, use the raft as a parachute, and I hope you don't die. No, they wouldn't even give him a raft. They'd just use him to tell him to use the bottom of his seat because it can be a flotation device. <laughs> just use happy thoughts, kid. You're Peter Pan's son. That's what you get for being a dork. Oh, I love how he forgets which house it is because they all look the same in England like that. Apparently right here on Wendy's door, uh, I don't know if it's this door or another one, but all the original Lost Boys names are on the door. Are they? Yeah. It, like, it may have been, I'm thinking it's the one in the tree later on. Oh, uh, okay. Spoiler, they go back to the tree hut. They go the back to Neverland. <laughs> and he just randomly touches a thing, kind of like in uh, 
the Princess Bride where he just Inigo oh, Montoya. Yeah, the <laughs> little knot in the tree. Right. Yeah. And then when he hits the knot. You know. <laughs> Ooh, he almost choked on his gum. Jeez. <laughs> See Peter right there. He just saved his kid's life. He's already still a hero. <laughs> he just didn't want to have to deal with the funeral cost. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably where his character is at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, here man. they are. They're in England at this point. Correct? They're... Yes, they are. Where the original pan takes place, I guess. The original story. Where, you know, the kids were English, but Peter Pan was American and didn't have an accent or anything like yeah, he that. He was. In fact, he was kind of like one of those jerky jock guys in the, <laughs> the old cartoon. I think I used to watch the old cartoon all the time just because um, I, I liked how he could fly all the time, you know, and it was kind of like Superman. I just thought, man, if I had a wish and I could fly, this is totally how I'd use it, but hopefully I'd be less of a jerk. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Oh, look at that picture of him as a kid. Who Who is it that played him as a little kid? Uh, it's Dustin Hoffman's son. The Dustin. youngest son, right? I think it's the youngest, yes. He has like because, three different kids in this movie. Yeah, I think his youngest son played Peter Pan. His The middle child was the daughter who was in the play. At the very beginning. And right, okay. then his oldest son was in the baseball game, in which Robin Williams, of course, missed, because Robin Williams hates baseball. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't want to be there on that day of filming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He just sent a stunt double in, you know? <laughs> Which could have easily been my dad around this period of time. He'd just have to shave the beard. And, <laughs> and probably drop like 30, 40 pounds. Right. And probably learn how to act. <laughs> oh, 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 here comes, um, what was it, Mary McDonald? Or what's Maggie Smith. Maggie. Mary McDonald. That's Battlestar Galactica. To downtown Peter Pan Alley. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're probably not too far off from Diagon Alley what with all the magic surrounding this and these people. Oh, definitely. Uh -huh. She <laughs> is like... Harry uh, Potter nerd alert. She is an Animagus, right? Or I guess she just... Yeah, she's a registered Animagus that turns into a cat. Why can't she like transfigure herself to look a little bit older? Yeah, what, what if what if Professor McGonagall is actually just like Wendy's alter ego or something <laughs> like that after she learned a bunch of magic <laughs> and got... Yeah, like some sometime after Neverland, she got pulled into Hogwarts and kind of changed her name <laughs> to protect Peter and the Lost Boys or something. Oh my gosh, this is the best script. Why are we not writing <laughs> this right now? All the Lost Boys weren't lost; they just disappeared from the like from... Muggle world. To yeah, go to Hogwarts. <laughs> exactly. They're, or, or they're all a bunch of squibs or something like that from from Hogwarts that she felt bad for and Definitely. sheltered there. Or that would mean that Peter Pan is kind of like Voldemort because he doesn't need a broom to fly. You've heard it here, folks. Peter the Pan plot. is just as bad as Tom Riddle. <laughs> <laughs> the plot thickens. <laughs> I like our expanded, like, interconnected universes that we're making here. I want to know, like, why everybody looks normal in, like, you know, typical 90s outfits. And then their daughter looks like a Scottish freaking <laughs> golf she, player. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She looks like she's ready to go play nine holes or Her something. hat's, like, three times the size of her head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she is kind of adorable. And that, there's that part later on where she sings, though, that br brings a little tear to my eye. I, oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I had a crush on her back when I was 10 years old. <laughs> Definitely not now, though. Don't get, like, weird ideas. Oh, say about the makeup that they used for her. Oh, yeah. Maggie Smith, at the time of this role, was about 55 years old. Not even that old. Yeah, like, like I mean, just she, she's still a good-looking young lady at that point. And they used, you know, just makeup effects to progress her to the 92-year-old uh, Granny Wendy. Which is crazy because now she looks exactly like she did playing Professor McGonagall like 20 yeah, years time, later. <laughs> by the time she's 92, she will have like the exact she'll, same She'll rate. look exactly like that. That's why I thought like, I think I remember watching Harry Potter just thinking like, man, this lady never ages. She's like the female Patrick Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Earl Grey tea, I'm telling you. It's right? the English. <laughs> like, to hell with beer and everything like that. Earl Grey tea, please. <laughs> this is great how this... this sugar. Walking into this room, like, he's, he's kind of got this creepy feeling, these memories. Oh, I love that mural with the Neverland stuff and Captain Hook's ship. Yeah, it's like, if you can see Captain Hook and Shmi right there, wouldn't that, like, instantly bring back memories? He looks like... He just he looks just like the Disney cartoon. I mean, this, this wasn't made by Disney, was it? It didn't have their... I don't think hell. so, no. Oh, it was TriStar. Yeah, TriStar. Oh, okay. TriStar. Yeah. I wonder how they got the licensing rights to pull something off it's like this. Probably one of those things where it's just different enough or yeah. something. But I mean, it's kind of like how remember they made that Wizard of Oz without mm -hmm. Disney did that without MGM's approval uh -huh. or whatever. Yeah. But it's like even though it's not clearly supposed to be based off the old movie, it's yeah. like definitely totally based <laughs> off that movie, even with the black and white to color transitions and stuff. So that must have been what they did here. I I don't know. We we know nothing 
completely official, folks. We're just conjecturing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll admit uh, to that. Here's something that's fun to know. The role of Captain James Hook was actually turned down by David Bowie. Uh, which uh, makes me uh, wonder uh, if he would have a whole other cameo for his bulge in this one like he does in the last <laughs> like, He would just have a hook hanging <laughs> off the exactly. bulge. Pizza, nice, so good awesome to see you again. Yeah. Don't defy me. <laughs> Don't defy me. <laughs> you and your children will be one of us forever. <laughs> Such a pity. <laughs> shadow? Oh, yeah, huh. Oh. Yeah, there's a whole thing with the shadows and everything here, too. That's great. Man, I, I always forget this is a Spielberg film for some reason, but, I mean, the direction and stuff like that and the shots are totally pro, like, you, well, totally you know. Spielberg. Yeah, Spielberg. And, and it also does that thing where Spielberg has a habit of putting children in danger. <laughs> All I'm saying is in Jurassic Park... Oh, we should do Jurassic Park. But in Jurassic Park, when... The kid gets electrified on the fence. I, that, that was another one. I was about ten or eleven years old when that came out, and so I was the same age as the kid, and I was about, I was like freaking out in that movie. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a quick moment. Uh, today it's me and Mike, as you know, it's our podcast. Obviously, we're gonna be on it. Um, <laughs> but we've got Sean. You might remember him from last week's podcast. Hi, uh, Sean. <laughs> hi, Sean. You're looking very Captain Hooky with your uh, mustache all flipped out. Yes. Sean has a nice tremendously, just wondrously waxed mustache that looks just like Dustin Hoffman's in this movie, actually. It's pretty <laughs> terrific. He actually almost looks like Blackbeard in this new pan, like, because he has, like, the bald head and, like, the wispy mustache and the long beard. He's it's looking at us like head. he's not taking it as a compliment. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll cool. call you Redbeard from now on, you know? <laughs> you guys just compared me to Wolverine, so I'm fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In a roundabout kind of way. Yeah. Also joining us today is Evan Weiss. Hello. He's the drummer in a local band known as the Beachmen. Check him out. They like to do a lot of free shows, but we prefer if you pay for it. You know? <laughs> help the band, help local communities. Also download their album on iTunes. Yeah, it's beachman.bandcamp. It's free, so there you go. You Beachman. have no Bandcamp. reason not to, yeah. other than laziness and procrastination. Unless you hate good at those. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's a master of both. Um, Sean is currently putting, to, putting together a magic deck. And I didn't know that he played magic, so we will have to, you know, oh, play yeah, one of these days. I have like a, a big old case that old women carry around their like uh, Avon <laughs> shit in, and it has like a little folding tray with like two trays and a whole area below that I use for my magic, and it has like one of the little like extenders oh, and wheels on it, so I could just like roll around my magic cards with me. That's pretty. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> keep all my uh you know loose cards in the bottom and i think i think will's wife is always afraid that he's never going to come back every time he comes over here because it's we we have so much fun stuff in our little man cave <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> you should all come over and hang out that'd yeah. be cool just let us know if you want to <laughs> you basically can hang out with us download the podcast sync up the movie join us it's That's an excellent, excellent fun time. It's why we make this. But yeah, so, you know, when I was a kid, I always liked his uh, baseball pajamas. Definitely. What's his and name in this movie? I feel bad. I don't Jack. know. Jack. Jack, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the story, the Peter and Wendy story that uh, Granny Wendy is telling uh, his uh, Peter, Pan Peter Banning's daughter right now is actually a first edition print of Peter and Wendy from 1911. Oh, really? The like the original artwork. Like the prop that they're using right there? Yeah, yeah it's the oh, actual cool. original book, first print. Huh. You can tell by the uh, olive green cover for it and then the gold uh, edging on the pages. Oh, wow. Yeah, I love the artwork in it, too. Yeah. Man, I, sorry, I was just looking at this scene with, where... Um, uh, Maggie Smith is all dressed up, and I'm thinking, like, man, even going to bed, she, like, gets all classy and dressed up. <laughs> and I forgot that they're going to, like, a whole awards Benefit thing. Or, yeah. yeah. Or they, for her work with orphans. And apparently Peter Banding's daughter wants to kill him because she made him a parachute. Yeah, I don't know, that parachute's not working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's like, here, Daddy, use this. I hope you die. <laughs> You're such it, a dick. <laughs> it almost worked, kid. Just keep it up. Keep trying. <laughs> They, well, did they just say they saw a window washer? Yeah. Is that Smee? Are yeah, they implying, or was it just some creepoid that lives in London? And 
Or that. <laughs> <laughs> they were referencing it was Smee, but it's really just some creep boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that's a good idea. Evan's smart enough to turn on subtitles, which is probably something we should have done for Predator as well. <laughs> well, how many lines are there in Predator? I mean, we, all you need to know is get to the chopper. Time to bleed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I kind of like to see like... Uh, onomatopoeia you know like a word <laughs> a word that describes a sound because sometimes those are like the funniest things like you hear like a laser sound and it says rip roaring electric <laughs> sound <laughs> and the music can be soft jazz music like, yeah that's why I love subtitles it just nighty night I just hate it when the subtitles like if you're watching a show with subtitles and and they and it's they're both in English and they say something in, in, in English, like the sentence, but then they subtitle it as a completely different <laughs> sentence. And you're like, hey, that's not what yeah. they said. <laughs> I hate it. Like, I don't know if it's lazy subtitlers or they only have <laughs> enough space to type out so many words or something. I guess it's true because whenever we watch like fan sub anime and they throw in like way, t like what the sentence actually is, and it's like this huge long sentence and it takes up half the screen. <laughs> there must be like some kind of uh, technique to subtitling, you know, right. or to captions, where they're like, don't do that, even if you have to change the sentence. Ah, I don't know. It still bugs me. So here's Robin Williams. He's giving his speech at the benefit for mm -hmm. Granny Wendy and how she's helped so many people and all the orphans start standing up in the crowd looking sad and everything. But he's up here and he's giving this big speech and he's, you know, telling jokes, poking fun. And I'm wondering to myself, you know, he kind of started off as a stand-up comedian. I oh, wonder yeah. if he wrote these jokes himself. <laughs> you think and then you... I think, nah, yeah. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think they would have been better, but uh, I guess if he's staying true to character, right? Then right. It'd well, be I'll lousy. His stand up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> dirty. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's, it's like Bob Saget dirty. You can't, you can't have Peter saying the F word. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on IMDb right now, okay? And I wanted to point this out because Evan just made a good point about Peter Pan's shadow. Well, on IMDb, it says, uh, while the kids are running around him, his, uh, the shadow is right next to Peter while he is on the phone, and this is actually a reference to Peter Pan and his shadow. Yeah. So, good eye. Yeah. Very yeah, good well, eye. I noticed because he was on the phone, and it just grew, and then it turns to the kid. Right, so right. people may think it's the kid, but it's really their moving stuff. Right? Like I say, that's why Spielberg is the best. Yeah. Little hints, or like subtle stuff in there right you have to that's 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 what's fun about scenes i mean when you're doing writing especially when you're making a visual medium like a movie like this and you put in things like that that are such nice touches that you don't have to point out or hit someone over the head with and you know it's 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 just nice and flavors the movie so much poor uncle toodles marbles. <laughs> <laughs> they originally also okay so, there's his teddy bear that he had in the original, like, Peter Pan. It's, yeah, yeah, We're looking toodles. at Toodles right now. Yeah. And then they've got Captain Hook's ship, the Jolly Roger, I believe. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure it's, like, the Jolly Roger. Uh, if not, it should be, dang it. And you can literally hear the dog, like, woof, 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 and then it says hook. And then, why would you use Captain Hook's hook? To keep the door closed. <laughs> like, know, if you didn't want to be reminded about seems that. Seems like after the trauma that, you know, if you think about it, that Michael, John, and Wendy went through yeah. as kids, that they'd, they'd want to, you know, I mean, not necessarily forget the part about Hook, but certainly not have anything in the room to, like, yeah. honor him or homage him or something. Yeah. I'm kind of glad that David Bowie didn't take the role, because I bet when he busts through that door, music. <laughs> <laughs> An owl, an owl <laughs> flies in for no reason, too. <laughs> He actually has a guy behind him who, who actually manages the hook, yeah. like the balls of the spheres and the right. labyrinth. This, he never uses his arms in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I personally love David Bowie as an actor. I'm disappointed. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you... I love him as Tesla and I, uh, oh, I never did oh, see The Prestige yet. Isn't that good. a crime? Yeah. yeah, yeah really. Another movie with Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, David Sorry, guys, I'm being kicked off my Batman. own podcast. David Bowie's being so influential. I mean, even in the recent uh, American Horror Story Freak Show, uh, I can't remember her name right now off the top of my head. Forgive me, everybody. That's uh, listening. Jennifer Connelly? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't remember her name. She's the leader Ludo? of the Freak Show. <laughs> um, she actually 
it's done by Brian Murphy or Ryan Murphy. So there's a lot of music because he does Glee, you know. Oh. So they've okay, started yeah. incorporating like music into this, and she actually sings uh, "Is There Life on Mars" by David Bowie, and oh, it's spectacular. Huh. Like uh-huh. it's so good. Here we are. We're getting to the house. Back oh. to the movie. Sorry, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so watching this as a ten year old for the first time. I mean, like, it, it's really unsettling watching, you know, their, their house have been broken into, and they follow that, uh, that, that tear through the, through the door, through the wall, all the way up there, and you know what it is. Like, you know what made it. But why the hell did he use the front door if he was unlocking the top door? Quiet, you. <laughs> <laughs> Quit using logic on us. <laughs> Kidnap the kids who wanted to thrash the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what if that's him on his way out or something, yeah. you know? He just... he oh, it is on his kid. left hand in this movie, where originally it was on his right hand during the yeah. cartoon. That's true, too, yeah, so this would have been on his way out down the stairs. I never thought about that, but you, you make a good point. Why was he coming in the window in the first place? <laughs> And why did he just leave out the front? Out the I same was screaming. The lady was so screaming. Worst maid ever. There was screaming. Did you call the cops? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I called Phil Collins. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Phil Carl- Collins is coming. Hey, up they're in the air of the night right now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boo. Mm. Oh, that's a cool dagger with the jewels and the skull eyes. Definitely. Look how well that's written. You know, for a guy with a hook for a hand, his penmanship is <laughs> quite nice. Yeah. Well, luckily it wasn't his right hand. Yeah, well, yeah. Do you think he that's writes true. his own stuff? You know, Toodles or somebody had to write that for him. It's <laughs> <laughs> me or someone you mean. Got to fly. Have to crawl. Oh, yeah. Have to yeah. save Maggie. Have to save Jack. Hook is back. Yeah, it's, I, I forgot about that line. That's an awesome line. I think uh, they said that this was actually a line from the original uh, book as well. But why would like Hook I, be back in the original one when it minus was his first the time? Hook is back. <laughs> yeah. Well, the fact that he he crows, I think that's nothing that I remember being in the Disney version. So that was, I thought that was kind of weird when I was a kid. What's that? He crowed in the Disney version. Did he in the Disney version? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe I didn't watch as many times as I thought. Is that Phil Collins? Yeah, that's right Phil Collins. Uh, that's He's got like this super huge receding hairline with a tiny little, little, little mustache, <laughs> mohawk in the front. That's kind of like Huey Lewis's cameo in Back to the Future, where he's all dressed up like a nerd. And yeah. he, he tells him to keep it down. Hey, keep it down. <laughs> of all things. Yeah, that guy's got a, hip, a hipster beard before it was cool, that other inspector. Right? He's like way ahead of his time. Right. Lost. I think my I'm only other real mind. exposure to Peter Pan, um, there was a cartoon on for a while called Peter Pan and the Pirates, and Peter Pan wore like a red outfit. Any of you guys ever watched that? Yeah. And Captain Hook's hook was like split into two hooks, like an earwig's butt. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it was cool. It was actually really so good. So it was like I those hooks that good. they used to give people like when they lost their hands, they could like yeah. rip between it? Yeah, like... it, had, it had two hooks, and I had always wondered, do you have to call them Captain Hooks? <laughs> Captain <laughs> Hooks? <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really good, but that one actually had the individual lost boys and had their names and had different episodes, you know, like devoted to each one. And and it was really good. And Tinkerbell, you know, it was the first time I ever saw that she talks normal, like, you know, and doesn't just sit there and tinker like a bell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For lack of a better term. <laughs> um, oh, that, that's her name, isn't it? I really feel like Julia Roberts was a really good choice for Tinkerbell. Like, she's one of my favorites. Um, I just felt like she was a tomboy. Yeah. So the tomboy goes really great with the Lost Boys, you know? Oh, yeah. I, don't know. I just wish they had more fairies in this. Like, it kind of went into the fairy notion. Kind of like that really weird one that they did with that one kid that was in the Sasquatch gang. Oh, which yeah. nobody probably ever saw in the world. No. But it had one of Justin Long's best freaking performances with his awesome freaking hey, long mullet. <laughs> Justin Long. America said no, but we just keep trying with him anyway. <laughs> America <laughs> said no, but everybody said... <laughs> Walrus, yes. <laughs> the guy that fucked the pie. <laughs> oh, Jason no, Biggs. Jason Biggs. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, Justin Long's in uh, what? Je- Jeepers Creepers. And He's in Jeepers the, Creepers. One of the diehards. One of the new stupid. Die Live for your diehard. I love that movie. Are you kidding me? Kevin Smith is in that. He's in that. Bruce Willis is a badass like usual. Yeah, but remember it's what it modern. led to with him and Kevin, uh, Bruce Willis and Kevin Smith's relationship when they made. The cop out. Yep. You hear that story? Anyway. Yeah. Uh, go, go check out Too Fat for Forty by Kevin Smith. And it's so good. <laughs> listen to his podcast too after you listen to ours, because it's much better. <laughs> you know what? You should go check out uh, 
the uh, Comic Book Men podcast. Uh, they just did one in New York City where he's talking about kind of the different things he's doing. He's doing a new movie called uh, Yoga Hosers and uh, like a... Uh, some sort of moose one. I can't remember what it is. Oh, that's like his a, Canadian trilogy. Yeah, yeah, his killer moose. But he's actually going to use like all the comic book men guys from it because one of the guys comes up and he's like, are you ever going to use these guys in your movie? Because we would all love to see uh, moose come out looking like Walt, or not Walt, <laughs> like uh, uh, Brian or whatever his name right. is with a big old beard and everything like that. <laughs> he's like, yeah, but it's kind of hard to make a moose that's big enough to eat a nine-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> excuses excuses but if we if anything we know about kevin smith it's that he finds a way <laughs> he does he really does all right so i guess what wendy's trying to remind him of who he is and she knows where the children are even if phil collins doesn't <laughs> <laughs> the, the funniest thing when she like shows him the picture of robin or of Robin Hood, Rob from, I think. What? <laughs> that's like that's like a combination of like Peter Pan's outfit and Robin Williams' name. It's just like Robin Hood, <laughs> but uh. What do you think? When, it's the Lost Boys, not the Lost Woods. Here we go. He like throws on his glasses because he's blind as a bat. And he stands and, there just like Peter. Yes, yeah, yeah. He like puts so his hands cool. on his hip, and it's a ginger. <laughs> that's Peter true. Pan huh? is still a ginger in that's the a, book. That was a very anime esque picture. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like eyes. <laughs> Yoshitaka Amano did it or something. Speaking of anime, I saw Big Hero 6. Why didn't you like that movie? I... <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like the movie. Because it was typical, like, Disney at the beginning, and then they tried to transition in, transition into Marvel, and I didn't care about the characters in the second part, and the first one was so typical Disney where they just, like, love killing kids' parents for some reason. <laughs> it's Who like... needs parents? Fooey. No, I I loved the movie, but maybe one of these days I'll force you to watch it with oh, with I'd me on a podcast. Yeah, I mean, I'll <laughs> and, watch and we it can again. sit there and argue and fight, and it'll probably be our final podcast because we'll <laughs> we'll hate each other. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, so I, okay, so now he's he's been told where his kids are, and he does what most adults do, I guess, when their kids get kidnapped and hit get the bottle. Drunk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, I don't know. I love it. He's just like me. He's just like. Grabs yeah. a whiskey, pours it. Who needs it on the rocks? <laughs> I mean, this is I shout, like, you know, you guys. I'm Peter Pan. <laughs> what surprises me is to fly. <laughs> this is like the first time he's shown any emotion towards loving his children. It's like, a good point. He's legitimately, just like perplexed by the fact that his children are gone. But does he really? I mean, he just like kind of drinks to forget, just like he's done with the rest of his life from after leaving Neverland. You know? Yeah. He's just. Well, maybe Chase it's alcohol forget. that got him to forget Neverland. You know, it kills brain cells. <laughs> I, I, don't know. I love that. Cheers to that. <laughs> yeah, as he holds up his beard. Um, the uh, that's a great line where Tinkerbell comes in, is flying around him. He's like, "Firefly from hell," <laughs> <laughs> which they called her Tinker Hell on the on the, the, set. the set and everything like that. Because I guess Julia Roberts was just like a pain in the ass to work with. Like, Why does this not surprise me? I mean, she did play a whore in her last role, probably. So. <laughs> and Aaron Brockovich, which is essentially another whore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry, feminazis. Um, no, okay, but but I do love uh, the, the fact that they have the special effect where she's on him. You know, I mean, we gotta remember, again, this is another one of those Tiny movies where... Footprints. Yeah, it was before computers, so to do stuff like the footprints and plan that kind of shot out... And have her stepping on his shirt, and his shirt moves, and have her fluttering around, and his, his hair moves. Like, I mean, I, it's just, it's super cool seeing these kind of effects, and, and, I don't know, maybe kids these days don't appreciate them like I do. And I mean... Ah, it's never the same, my yeah, day was man. better. And I mean, they've got Lucasfilm to, to kind of yeah. help them along, from oh, yeah, what this, I understand. This was a big, Spielberg. this was a big ILM movie at the time, yeah, this is what the... A special effects, you know, uh, powerhouse, you know, big Definitely. showcase of, of new effects they had at the time and stuff. And it's only, what, like seven years after Return of the Jedi or nine years after Return of the Jedi or something? So, I mean, movies like this were, you'd get one or two a summer. Now we have, you know, a couple dozen to choose from every summer, but, you know, I mean, it was, it was just such a big deal when something like this came out and everyone would go see it and... You know, it was, it was a big deal at recess. Everyone would talk about it. Oh, Tink could live in that house. That'd be awesome. Look at it. She's perfect size. It's funny. It's adorable. Because he calls her... He says, you're a strange little bug. Uh -huh. And then in 
Fern Gully. I don't know if you've got all have seen Fern Gully. It's a great movie. It's like the original Avatar, basically. <laughs> um, Avatar was totally ripped off from Fern Gully. He plays Daddy. He plays the bat that was does, uh, yeah. scientifically oh, altered right. and everything Rock like that. that and he calls the uh, fairy in that little bug. Oh, yeah. He's like, you're a strange little bug. <laughs> so he's basically just like taking lines from old movies. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Williams is racist against fairies. Yeah, yeah Robin is Williams is racist against fairies. <laughs> what we call that? Uh, Pixies? <laughs> oh, I, I wish I could clap a loud Pixist. and bring Robin Williams back. Oh. <laughs> right? Too soon. Yeah. I, was, I say that with love, I promise. The clapping to bring back the fairy comes back from the original play, actually. Yeah. Peter and Wendy. Yeah. Uh, they would, uh, Peter Pan would engage the audience. And he would be like, hey, everybody clap, like, we have to bring her back, like, let's uh -huh. clap. But they had to leave it out of the cartoon because they couldn't interact with the audience in right. the cartoon. So it was, like, totally, like, retconned out. Yeah, at that that, point. that's really cool. I, I always figured in the in the Disney cartoon that, because, you know what, the place explodes and Tink takes the brunt of the bomb. Uh -huh. And, and like, he, he's just sitting there and he finds her and he's holding her. And then the, as they come back, everything's fine. I, I always figured there was some kind of deleted scene where... You know, they, they he clapped or he had to do that whole thing. Yeah. Oh, look how she... She's strong, man. Look at that. She's carrying Peter to Neverland. She must be like uh, Hank Pym or something. <laughs> yeah, she's she's Wasp. <laughs> she's, yeah. she's Janet Pym. <laughs> she's used the Pym particles. Oh, maybe bit. they should cast her as... Uh, oh, wait, they already cast... Uh, what's her face from Lost? Oh, is that... Who's that? Isn't that George Lucas and Carrie Fisher? You yeah, said? George yeah. Lucas and Carrie the, Fisher. The kissing couple on the bridge. Kissing. Yeah, okay. I felt bad for that couple when they looked down because they were going to lose all their happy thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> and they're over the bridge, they'll probably float over ice water. They yeah. fell and died of hypothermia. The end. The story you don't see. <laughs> so I want Neil deGrasse Tyson to explain to me how heading for the third star on the right gets them to Neverland. I think it has something to do with the slipstream of the crosswinds in the north or something. Oh, let's see if I can do this. You see, <laughs> when you Go towards the sky. <laughs> no, I can't do it. I, yeah. I, I just can't do like. <laughs> Maybe if you had a better mustache. Uh, right. Guess, so. uh, the mustache just like muffles his voice and makes perfect. <laughs> I mean, he's got the best. Like he should like narrate pornos or something like that. Because <laughs> oh my gosh. Neil deGrasse Tyson has like the best voice. Or that, or just do his science, uh, what podcasts and shows and stuff like that with like a porn soundtrack in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Chicka <laughs> bow. Clock was a kid, by the way. Yeah. Oh, the giant alligator clock. That implying, stuffed. yeah, implying yeah. the alligator that ate his hand that got more stuffed. That was intimidating than the cartoon one. Like that was the crocodile. Yeah, I'm scared of that too. That thing's <laughs> more like a dinosaur. So okay, why did Tink drop him in Pirate Town? Did, did she just not quite that. make it? Yeah, she's just. <laughs> Maybe she knew his kids were there, so she's like. I don't know. Oh, that's a good point. She could have just told him, right? And dropped him somewhere safe instead of risking killing Peter Pan right away. Well, and if and, and she believes this is Peter so much that she thinks she can drop him in a crowd full of pirates and he's going to kick everybody's butt, right? That's him. Uh, sorry. Him, being the guy with the cane, is actually uh, Jimmy Buffett. Oh, okay. That explains the limp. Yeah, no, and that I'm, explains I'm why kidding. everybody's no. drunk because they're in Margaritaville. <laughs> <laughs> they must have had one on set. He brought one with him. We in Margaritaville. In Margaritaville. If you're ever at Margaritaville in Vegas, just l literally choose on the menu the perfect margarita, and it really does live up to its name. Um, don't, just don't ask me how I know that, because I think my mom listens to this podcast. Um, <laughs> At least some of these parents didn't support the podcast. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. My dad is like our first Kickstarter. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, your dad's cool. Ivan McCulley, thank you very much for supporting the podcast. <laughs> thank you very much. Danny Frisk. Thank you very much. Yeah. Dan er, Frisk. Yeah, Frisk. It's Danny Frisk, sorry. Thank you for supporting the podcast. It's been a great help, you know. We're up fifty dollars. Yeah. We're about uh, I don't know uh, fourteen or seven percent. Yeah, that's <laughs> our goal. I was gonna say we're almost a tenth of the way there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're doing good. Um, so this uh, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Williams at some of his best. But that's great how they, they they dress him up and disguise him, and she coaches him on how to be a pirate. Oh man, there's the hook. The titular hook. Uh, oh, there's Smee. Bob Hoskins is Smee. Bob Hoskins. Eddie Valiant. I've never noticed that one long curl of hair right by his face. Maybe he was a Padawan. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. 
Those are some horrors, aren't they? Oh, it kind of looks like my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that doesn't go on the podcast. Yeah, I was going to say, like, if your dad listens, maybe your aunts do, too. <laughs> I didn't say which aunt. Do you think, I mean, Tinkerbell has red hair. She uh, has the garb and everything like that. Maybe she was Peter Pan at once, you know? <laughs> and Peter Pan isn't actually Peter Pan. It's a lookalike. Or, like, some guy that was just so distraught. Maybe Peter just Pan's... Just to be an orphan that Granny Wendy took in. Maybe Peter Pan's part fairy somehow or something, because we oh, know fairies good. can get big. And at least in the old Disney cartoon, he had the, the pointy, pointy ears, ears and an elfish face. Maybe he's Legolas' son or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peter Pan is the son of Legolas and some fairy. That he <laughs> if only he was oh. better shooting. Ah, that's uh, a cool shot where, the, where they put the hook on and all the flash bulbs go off. That was done in one shot because they used a very rare flash bulb in order to shoot that shot. So We get one one take, ladies and gentlemen, so make it a good one. It's like, like our podcast. Not sing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like our podcast. It's one take. We, 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 we lack the ability to edit anything or to stop mid-podcast, so... You, we're kind of stuck with whatever we put on here. Indeed. Oh, I always love this little trick with the stairs, how they make the red carpet come out. I, I want One day when I'm super rich and I become a famous singer or whatever, I'm going to have stairs like that somewhere in my house. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a pretentious SOB. Yeah, listen to him chant. I, lo- I love how he like moves his hands at the music. It's, Dustin Hoffman really is an awesome, great actor. I think he's one of those people, too, that everyone told him he'd never make it. And, you know, there's no way he's going to be a star. And... So, but this is definitely... Dustin Hoffman with his wicked, awesome eyebrows. I yeah. wish I could grow That's some like that. Right. <laughs> I, I think I am now in my old age. But um, now, once you get... You just have to hit 30, Will. Then your eyebrows will suddenly turn. <laughs> but um, the... Uh, I, I think... I can't think of another role that Dustin Hoffman does that he disappears into more than this one, you know? Uh, I am Sam. Okay, well, Z twos. Oh, that's not Dustin Hoffman. What am I thinking Rain about? Man. I'm thinking uh, Rain, Rain, Rain Man. You're thinking yeah. of Rain Man, but I was still, I was still, <laughs> still I was looking at. Yeah, it started making me think of Tropic Thunder, and I don't know if I should say the line. <laughs> yeah, I'll say it, and I'll say it just like Robert Downey Jr. says, "You never go full retard." Yeah, <laughs> mind you, I don't use the, I don't use that word. You know, we worked for children with autism at one point. We, so yeah, we've gotten rid of the R word. Right, right. But for the sake of quoting a movie, and you know, that, that's our excuse. We're quoting a classic movie. Yeah, exactly. Is Tropic Thunder classic. Well, it is now. We've immortalized it. Um, but someone here to stop it all. Oh, snap. Is it you, Robin? <laughs> Do you not belong here? Well, you are the only one wearing glasses. <laughs> I like the, I, I'm glad they keep it lighthearted and, and just, <laughs> just cartoony enough with the pirates here that you don't. I, I guess it, as a child's film, a children's film, it's uh, it makes it that much. Less impactful when they get killed and slaughtered later. <laughs> yeah. I want to know who plays this guy that oh, goes into the boo box. It's Glenn Close. It's, it's something like that. It's actually a girl. Yeah. I remember that. It's totally Glenn so. Close. It's got to be Glenn Close. It's Nova Prime herself. It from is Guardians Nova of Prime. the Galaxy. Oh, snap. Yeah, I remember. Oh, where did I see that bit of trivia? That just came to me. <laughs> yeah, but like but, looking at it, you can totally tell it's a girl. It's so huh? funny because she has chest hair when she's typically smooth, where in this movie, Robin Williams is smooth, where he typically has hair. Ah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Glenn Close does have chest hair. I've never seen her. It's funny. Movies. They had to bring in a horde of angry goats to like <laughs> gnaw at Robin Williams's chest hair, and it still took about three hours for them uh, to like get it all the way down. They, they do that at night so it wouldn't grow too much, and then literally between each take, they had to shave him. With a straight racer. <laughs> oh, I love the boo box. The boo box. <laughs> yeah. The boo box. Children in fishnets. Not like that. Like literal fishnets. I don't like children in fish- fishnets. <laughs> <laughs> that came out really wrong, <laughs> <Yeah>. Will. <laughs> oh, oh, he's There's revealing himself too kids. early. No, Peter Pan, you're too old and fat to face Captain Hook now. <laughs> So, did you know, have you heard that James Franco and uh, Seth Rogen were on Naked and Afraid? 
Oh no, really? That yeah. that Discovery Channel show? Yeah, uh -uh. they like legitimately did it, and I think it was because Seth Rogen was getting a little overweight or something, and needed to lose some. <laughs> so he got do, motivation he, for it that way. Yeah, you do two weeks and you lose like forty pounds. So. There's there's another guy that you have to shave for different movies. When you see him in Knocked Up, he looks smooth as a baby. Yeah. But then in Neighbors, you can tell he's like, I'm I'm too famous to care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless his heart. It's like how Smee instantly recognized. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Smee knows who he is. Well, Smee was the window washer, right? Supposedly. So he's already seen him back in England. and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of How do you get his is. dental records? Like, how do they know what dental records are? Because Smee, man, he, like, crosses worlds. <laughs> like, he's the janitor at the end, remember? Is he a who? He knows what's up. Oh, oh, maybe Smee's a time lord. And his, like... And he's got a TARDIS hiding somewhere his on His TARDIS ship. is the Jolly Roger. And he's all British like Doctor Who, because right? Because they take the Jolly Roger with them, right? Don't like... all British people have a TARDIS somewhere in their basement or in their garden or something? Probably. Oh, like they find the little footprints. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I bet they had to grab the safety hook for that take where do he you think... puts it up by Robin Williams' face. Do you think that Captain Hook has obsessive compulsive disorder? No, yes. <laughs> I mean, he wouldn't walk down the stairs without his red carpet. That's true. Everything has to be prim and polished just perfectly. He's got a multiple personality disorder, like when he's talking to Smee later on. We'll get to that part. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he just flip-flops his emotions, like, so rapidly. And he can't stand the click of a clock. Yeah, the click the of click a clock. clock. He gets, like, obsessed with the sound and stuff of it. I think that uh, he has a lot of... Maybe he reflects, like, all of the problems that the... Uh, Lost Boys have later in life, like with losing their parents and everything like that. If you grow up after having all these dreadful <laughs> things happen to you, you develop these, you know... Right, all these little mental issues and uh, uh, disorders or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> he just kills his own guy through the checkbook. It's because who uses checks these days? Come on. <laughs> Another thing that dates this movie, right? <laughs> Discover. It's everywhere you want to be. <laughs> Even except Neverland. Oh, except Neverland. for Neverland. Yeah. <laughs> Evan, take over for me. i got to use the rest for uh, Potty break for Will. If you're uh, what, following along, you can make a drinking game out of this. Yeah, definitely. If you're ready for the bathroom, you got to drink. <laughs> if any one of us do. Every time Kitty cries changes her costume in the X-Men series you have to do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I just read that Steven Spielberg originally slated this film as a vehicle for Michael Jackson in 1983. I... But how? Who? How, Michael, who would he play? No, Peter? Uh, he was just interested in starring in it and contributing to the soundtrack. Oh, but, that would have been cool. But Steven Spielberg, Of course, this was like 90s Michael Jackson when yeah. he, you know, he definitely wasn't as... Cool. That, that's when he was singing Black or White and Remember the Time, and nobody remembers Remember the Time because it sucked. Yeah. And, and, but it says that Steven Spielberg decided to focus on Temple of Doom, which is my favorite Indiana Jones movie. So. Temple of Doom is totally underrated for so for Indiana Jones ones. Like, I remember it was my least favorite as a kid, probably just because it was the scariest. It was, but it's like, yeah. it actually is so good. It's and amazing. like, I don't know, I love the fact that he saves all those little kids. And it's, it's probably the most heroic that Indiana really? Jones actually ever gets. But um, we should do that movie. We should do all the movies. Yeah. <laughs> all of the We're things. going to explain all of the movies. <laughs> so you said that... Uh, Michael Jackson was supposed to be the well, music. Well, Steven Spielberg wanted to do this for Michael Jackson. So yeah, he could be in it and help with the soundtrack. So he could be Peter Ben. Say what you like it. Oh my god. You should take it off. <laughs> We're gonna save Peter. So Michael Jackson is Peter Pan and David Bowie is Captain Hook. Oh, oh god. What a movie. <laughs> All they need is Bill Cosby as Smee and you've got a rape pass. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Sorry. Rape. Very topical. <laughs> <laughs> check um. your mental health, everybody. <laughs> Seriously, check your mental health. <laughs> You're not hearing this at all. You're crazy, each and every one of them. <laughs> no, these uh. allegations toward Bill Cosby, like... Who the hell cares? <laughs> Bill Cosby... He's a Jello spokesman. I think he's doing the right thing by kind of just staying away from it. Just like yeah. kind of blow over and being like, you know what, guys? It's the pudding pot. <laughs> <laughs> you got your pudding and you got your popping. Um, 
You put the jello in the boot. Uh, yeah, it's with, uh, uh, with all the podcasts these days with the Michael J- or with the Bill Cosby thing. I don't think I've heard of Bill Cosby <laughs> impersonation that actually fits. How sad <laughs> is it? So how sad is it here that uh, that Captain Hook, like he's so disgusted by what Peter Pan has become, he's just like, whatever, just kill them all. I don't want to hear the name of Peter Pan ever again. You know, and uh, and then it takes Tinkerbell to convince him that she she can give him the war he wants. She can give him. You know the the nemesis that he wants in Peter Pan, and you know otherwise, even Captain Hook, like, you know, thought that Peter was such a, a, a pushover, you know, such yeah. a washout. He just puts a gun to Captain <laughs> Hook's face. You promised a war of a century. <laughs> How did they make Tink's wings do that? Like, they must have actually just had him on Julia Roberts, right? Because they're actually moving and have life and. And character to him, you know? It's really weird. Hold on. Does that mean they're living? <laughs> do they do, do they have sentience? Maybe like... maybe maybe <laughs> Julia Roberts has wings. Maybe all movie star actresses do. As one of those things like in Dark Crystal. But I don't have wings, of course not. You're a boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. She shakes his hook. That's awesome. Wings are just Oh, I'm not even symbolic vaginas. Oh my uh, gosh! <laughs> damn you, Georgia O'Keefe! I think and you've all had your enough beers, Will. <laughs> um, I just got back from Portland. Like I've been trying to get drunk for the last three days, and I just can't do it. You on can't this even get drunk here. on this Rocky Mountain <laughs> piss water that we have in Utah. Oh, that's I mean, great! They just knock him right off the boat. <laughs> Thank goodness for mermaids. And here's the thing, these mermaids are supposed to be like vicious, nasty creatures. Yeah, well yeah, they yeah. are to everybody but Peter, remember? Uh remember how they like they all love Peter, but they're all kind of uh, for lack of a better word, total bitches oh, to wow. Wendy. <laughs> I used to love this scene because I thought they were all topless at one point. <laughs> and the Asian one was like the hottest I used to think. There's an Asian one? Yeah. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> I thought there was, at least. I just like all their blue hair. Uh, in the pi- spy- in the <laughs> look, it's Ariel. It's totally Ariel from the Little Mermaid. She's in the spirit too. of the pirates, the shot of rum is for you, our listeners. <laughs> Arr. <laughs> so one of those is Ariel. Who are the blue and, and green haired ones? We I don't know, but they're hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they're mermaids. Of course they are. But remember, they have fish parts on the bottom, oh, yeah, so you know it'll never work Dang. out. I wish it was the other type of mermaid. With the fish part on top and the girl part on the bottom. (laughs) Come on, don't you want to make love to me? Come on. Yeah, (laughs) like I'm family, yeah. That's great, they put him in a giant seashell to put him up. Who rigged that up? Who's friends with the uh, mermaids that knew that at one point somebody would be dropped into the water when he needs to be... (laughs) Yeah, Rufio (laughs) Max with the mermaids. Because he's the new pan and he's just that cool. (laughs) Okay, like... uh, Two years ago, at the first Salt Lake Comic Con, we were wa- we were like cruising around, checking all the cosplay out, and the best cosplay I saw that day was a woman dressed as Rufio, and she <laughs> pulled it off to the teach. She had the trihawk, the makeup, the outfit, That's the body awesome. type. Did she have the bone armor, or was she like the just his normal outfit? Uh, just his normal outfit uh, with the really makeup cool, and everything. But it was Rufio so has the coolest cool. armor at the end of this movie. Seriously, the Lost Boys hut here, their little mini city or whatever. It's just like a 10-year-old's dream. It for really is. It's still have. my would, dream. Are you would, kidding me? I know, right? Like, <laughs> would you love to live here? Well, all, all the little trap doors and the, the tracks park. for skateboards yeah. and stuff like that and the little sail things, you know, it's it's just super cool. Ow. How cool would this be if, like, uh, one of the skateboarders on here was uh, Tony Hawk? Wait, didn't Tinkerbell just, like, barely see him on the pirate ship? And she's like, oh, I guess I'll go home and take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> Five minutes later. <laughs> He's drowning, oh well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll go get some 20 Not going to look weeks. for him, not going to do anything, just going to sleep in this clock. Do you think she sleeps in a clock because it'll keep Hook away? Oh, maybe. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. I've never thought of take, that before, but... Take, take, right? Yeah. Lost boys, wake up! Hook is back! What the heck was coming out of that tent with all the colored feathers? This, this <laughs> kid always weirded me out because he had like the, that weird jacket. I don't know, he looked too much like a businessman. Yeah, I'm like, he always looks like somebody. Yeah. Like the rest of them look like a bunch of newsies or something like that. Like, they really just... do. I think that's what he looks like, the guy from the newsies. Like, open the gates yeah. and seize yeah. the day. <laughs> like Batman, he's on newsies. I was gonna say I yes, watched Santa Fe, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Batman! 
I love how they make this kid such a good character. As a fat kid myself at the time, like, <laughs> I really appreciated that. He was my favorite character in this, mainly because he balls up later. Oh yeah, L like literally he, he turns into a ball of people, that's, that's what he means. He's kind of like Majin Buu, almost. Yeah, a little bit. He's kind of invincible and, you know, round. I'll make you candy! <laughs> Boo eat you! And that's why I watch my Dragon Ball Z subtitled in Japanese. <laughs> No, just Boo's voice, but he, he was totally like that kid that we used to uh, work with at the school. We won't use names, yeah. but he looked, there was a kid that we used to work with <laughs> that was kind of chunkier, had the same voice. And yeah, everything. he looked just like a real life little boy mage and Boo. And, and, and uh, one time on Facebook, we mentioned him and one of our friends is like, who are you guys talking about? We post a picture of Boo and she goes, oh, I know who you're talking about now. <laughs> okay, yeah, so Rufio, um, I have a friend, uh, one of my very best friends, Chris. And uh, his his uh, his his dad is from Hong Kong. His mom is from the Philippines, and he always looked exactly like Rufio, just naturally. So like all the time, like he he was like a black belt in Taekwondo too. So whenever he do all these cool things and kicks and stuff like that, we all chant Rufio, Rufio, Rufio. <laughs> he totally was Rufio. It's funny. I uh, practiced karate one time, yeah. and then I stopped watching Power Rangers. <laughs> 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 it was funny because I would like. You know, you would jump on the trampolines when dra trampolines were actually cool, you Before know? Before we realized Before there were just death bar. traps in their <laughs> yeah. backyard, everyone's backyard. Uh, me and my friends would, like, play uh, Power Rangers and everything like that, and my buddies <laughs> would kick me and stuff, and then I'd, like, land one blow on accident, and they would, like, totally Voice freak out. out. Yeah. And then I'd be sent home uh -huh. by their parents, like, you can't come over anymore and then like a week later i would come back because they didn't have anybody else to play with <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how parents say that they don't want a kid to play with another kid for a while and then they just kind of forget after a week oh, oh. Right. there's the innuendo robin williams getting shot in the cock <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> his voice goes all high <laughs> Tinkerbell <laughs> tripping up the Lost Boys. Those boys. Oh, it's great how she tugs scuffles. on their whatever's here in a second. Wait, Ask is that God. this scene? Yeah, here it They're is. They're neckerchiefs. <laughs> Why are we? They must be fans of Freddy from, from Scooby Doo. So does that little thing like shoot things, or is it just this crossbar on Rufio's like? Wind I think it's riding? just the crossbar on his thing, and it's made of bamboo, so it's hollow. Okay. What is this sticky stuff made of? I'm kind of afraid to ask. I know, like a lot of things. I guess it's just imagination, but I mean. Oh, yeah, that's it, true. His imagination, but his imagination isn't working this? yet. Yeah. yeah. So, what the? Wow, that flower is getting <laughs> a little fresh. <laughs> yeah, sniffing him. Keep your petals to yourself. Well, you know, flowers sniffing a cock. We go back to Georgia O'Keeffe. <laughs> <laughs> the symbolism is uh, not that symbolic. It's a little too literal. Sony needs to teach these kids that arrows with points at the end are a lot, lot more better. effective. <laughs> They'd kill more pirates if yeah. they didn't have the goo on the end. They just have caramel apples on the ends of them or something. You know what's funny? Like, I see the skateboarding and they're in the half pipe and everything like that. And it brings me back to about like 1989. A movie called Gleaming the Cube. <laughs> and it was a skateboarding movie, okay? okay? Right. And Tony Hawk has a cameo, and he's not skateboarding, he's driving a damn truck! Oh, that's hilarious. It's like, if, I mean, if Tony Hawk is that big of an influence, why wasn't he skating at that time? Uh -huh. But, uh, they're like drawing pictures on the half pipe of pirates and stuff. Uh -huh. I guess you get to ride all over them. There's, there's this bit here where they're throwing the ball at him, they keep saying, play, play. And my friends and I always played basketball every recess at the time. And my friend was doing this to me, and I didn't get the reference. And he's like, oh, that's right, you haven't seen Hook. And I'm like, yeah, thanks for rubbing it in, it, jerk. I wonder how they made that basketball. Pirate skin. Is it, kind of race, skin. is it kind of racist that they're wearing feathers in their hair and they're like hooting like Indians? Because I mean, I know there's Indians in Neverland, but still. Which they were really racist is, in like, the cartoon. Yeah. Oh, that's a cool sword. I love how Peter Pan actually has like a pan sword. Yeah. You know, passed down from pan to pan. Instead of like, I always thought it was kind of sissy that he like fought with a dagger against Captain Hook in the cartoon. You know? <laughs> Makes oh, way more sense than a sword. <laughs> Yo, Jean Dugger. That's great. He's, so he's got, what, his posse of eight kids that actually kind of believe in him? Yeah. That's cool. There's like, I don't know how many Lost Boys there are at this point. It almost seems like there should be 50. more than these 50. Yeah, I don't know. But how do, like, these 50 kids, even with the things that they use, take on three, four hundred pirates? 
better. Well, they're adults. Yeah, but we know that they know how to disguise themselves as pirates. We know they know how to lay traps. <laughs> they're proficient at building machines where the pirates aren't, so that gives them an edge. Oh, definitely. Also, they can apparently <laughs> disappear in the forest and, and get lost. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they're lost boys, I mean. <laughs> right. <laughs> that part, though. Like, everybody thinks this guy isn't Pat and crossed the line. He's like the first person to walk <laughs> yeah. across the line. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Pat himself is the first one to do it. Oh, this little boy's sweet. This is a really cool way to do it where he touches his face and stuff like that. <laughs> this kid always reminded me of the guy that does the reading rainbow. <laughs> LeVar Burton. It's like LeVar, a little LeVar Burton. He looks like him. It's like, did you just like shrink yourself into this child? <laughs> there to do this? you are, Peter. But you don't have to take my word for it. <laughs> There's just like a little Peter Pan somewhere in his eyelash or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's great how he takes off his glasses and he's really curious about it. And uh, so It's cool how childlike it is. I guess that's part of the message. You have to be childlike not childish but childlike like to one. to believe and use your imagination just just find wonder in the world you know we all grow up and we all become such jaded old people concerned with money and jobs and everything like that and, and you know while while you should i mean that stuff's important too you don't want to just be a bum on the street or whatever like i mean just remember to have fun and, and yeah. find wonder and joy in life you know like like kids only can you know i mean i think this kid at this point the kid that realizes that it's peter pan i think that he is actually the leader because i mean the older you are the less you are imaginative oh yeah maybe you he's want like... to be a kid so rufio he's the oldest so he's the biggest he's more like the bodyguard but this kid he sees the imaginative side he sees things as a child's perspective right so maybe he's actually the leader that that would be weird getting into the like geopolitical <laughs> thoughts and sciences of the lost boys <laughs> no there's, there's no way that they're actually just a bunch of little brats that like to sleep in and play games and you know beat the crap out of pirates right Welcome back, Welcome back to Neverland, Neverland Panaman. Man. <laughs> I love the it. The way he said, Man, Man. <laughs> Look, he did the ripped jeans before it was an emo thing. I know, <laughs> right? Like, freaking Rufy is the original emo. Oh my gosh, actually, looking at some of their outfits, I've, I've been thinking that the costumes are really good, like, especially with the pirates and stuff. And kind of timeless, but oh, looking at Rufio, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so 90s cool. Literally, all these kids <laughs> like are they're hipsters. like your bows too. They're like the, <laughs> they're like what the, the the new kids on the block wore at the time. <laughs> yeah, these kids are hipsters. Like this is what like the hipsters are wearing these days. Right. And like, uh, oh, I just realized Rufio's got all the red feathers in his hair, like like a rooster, which would crow, right? <laughs> just like that. <laughs> oh, speaking of those golf hats, that one. Uh, uh, Big kid has one. Yes, the he one that does. Turns into a ball later. I guess uh, maybe he got it from his daughter. I don't know. <laughs> it just looks smaller because the kid's fat. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't get sets like this anymore. Everything's all green screen yeah. crap. Oh, I sound like a jaded old man. Look how beautiful that is. <laughs> like you know, those books back there are painted. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, I, like they use a little shimmer to make them look poppy. Well, look how cool. I, I love Captain Hook's room. Like maybe again when I become a. A famous uh, archaeologist, or I, I don't know what becomes famous that I can do one day. When, when I become a famous race car driver, <laughs> that's rich, you know, like I'm gonna build a room like this in my house. Dream big. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just I just keep reaching up in the hey, sky, man. Peek up, reach for the stars. That's a great shot where he's looking through his own hood. <laughs> and Smee's just still like trying all his food. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, I didn't understand that. I'm like, why is he eating all his food? Like, if he's gonna eat it, why is Smee trying it? Oh, for poison. For poison, yeah. yeah. I later realized that in, you know, like, learning how <laughs> servants would eat the food and everything. But I'm like, why the hell is he just, like, pigging out on Hook's food? I've never so, even picked up on that before. Yeah, that's great. I think that not only does Peter or uh, Captain Hook have, you know, the mental problems as well. Right. But what if he's just, like, a walking enigma of all mental problems, like... Here's anorexia. How many times do you see him? <laughs> how many times do you see me? This is how we, we are learning through Will and his perception that, that, that Captain Hook is like the single most flawed human being. He really with is. With the most disorders and problems. And that's why he's so angry. That's why he tries to commit suicide. Yeah, he right does. Here. He's suicidal. Oh my gosh. He's an alcoholic. The only thing you see him do is drink. Right, right. 
Oh, you know, one thing I always notice about Hook in this costume is it's something it's that always wonderful. bugs me in movies when, when someone gets a hand chopped off and then you can tell their forearm is about, like, five or six inches longer all of a sudden. Okay, you're talking about the last movie you just watched where... <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> when the guy's well. arm was dangling. <laughs> well, well, no, but, I mean, even think of, like, Darth Vader in Return of the Jedi. As, right. soon, as, his, as soon as his hand gets cut off, like, yeah, his hand's not there, but you can see, like, his forearm just suddenly goes at, like, a 45-degree angle <laughs> the other way because, you know, David Prowse's hand is in there still. Yeah. But, like, th th they hide it with Hook um, by having the, the puffy pirate shirt. <laughs> yeah. It's a brilliant so use of costuming. Oh, but, I like the uh, But you never British, think about it. You never notice. I like the British roll in your tongue. Brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. Little, it's my grand <laughs> Moff Tarkin. He talks like that. Princess Leia, before you execution. You, Shane. <laughs> before Where I... is the rebel base? <laughs> see, I always wanted that. A where bed did, that descends from the ceiling. Where ceiling? did they keep that bed? Via a, a pirate wheel, a ship steering wheel. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it's up in the gaff, gaffing. <laughs> <laughs> it's up in the set, where the best boys hang out, or whoever else you see in the credits. They just have like an Gaffer entire the layer boys. that is completely empty, just so he can store his bed up above. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of mirrors. He's vain, there's another one. Yep, uh, vanity, like all the, mirrors. Yeah. Like, you see so many... Oh, but this is like, a great shot where he looks at all the mirrors and they all look... Good forms, me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what would the world be like without Captain Hook? Yeah. I'm ready for my nightcap. Oh, um, he almost said the F word. Abs of flog and loot. Let's go, Doug Ryan. We're doing great. <laughs> oh. Look at all those shoes, see? <laughs> he needs the exact same type of shoe. All the time. Yeah. Well, like, like, he doesn't want to expand away from what is normal to him. Yeah, I think you've That's nailed it. That's his obsessive it. compulsive disorder. I think you've nailed it. I really think that he is a walking enigma of oh. all the mental, like, uh... That's great how the, the, the bell rings, right, as he gets his apostrophe. I mean, it's <laughs> I think you mean epiphany. Let me. Just... That must hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These two guys are so great together. They really are. Like I love Bob Hoskins. <laughs> of the, of the scenes where it's not Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman are really good because, uh, from what I've read, uh, Dustin Hoffman and Robin Williams just like clashed so much. Yeah, like, apparently they hated each Dustin other. Dustin Hoffman would be like, I this. didn't like that. Like, let's reshoot it. <laughs> Robin Williams comes back, you know, in typical Robin Williams. He's like, well, why don't you just learn to act? Right, in reference to when <laughs> Hoffman, like, ran around the block or ran a mile to look all huffy and puffy. Yeah. And he comes up to Lawrence Olivier, and Lawrence Olivier tells, out, tells him that line where he's just like, why don't you try acting? You know, it's, it's much easier. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's per, like classic Robin Williams or like that, something like that in. Oh, yeah. And then he's got, like, his... I don't know, like, do you think maybe they are also lovers? No. <laughs> no, you don't uh, think so? We're maybe? not gonna go there on this podcast. No, okay, all the no, okay. They had on the boat. I don't mind it, but... <laughs> That's I mean, right, they, they got met. more than enough horrors. They don't have to, you know, resort oh, to experimentation and right. stuff like that. You know, I'm under the assumption that it's all men, but you're right, you did see the women in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I mean. that. Yeah, so, here they create their master plan. I think they made their uh, master plan in the original Peter Pan inside his bedroom. So I guess he does his best thinking right before bed. Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> I lay in bed sometimes and I just can't stop my mind from wandering. Yeah, but I never have any good ideas. I just kind of, <laughs> you know, lay there and let the circus play out, I guess. <laughs> I literally can't go to bed without a movie playing, so... Is that something about our generation, do you think? Because, like, I know a lot of people, and that's how my girlfriend is. She always has to watch something before she goes to sleep, or as she goes to sleep. And yeah. I know, I've been like that for at least ten years, ever since I was old enough to just put in something in the TV and fall asleep on the couch or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so these kids are trying to get Robin, or, uh, Peter Pan into shape here, okay? Since when did these kids become fucking personal trainers? <laughs> or, sorry, freaking personal trainers. Well, what's funny, too, there must be some kind of Neverland magic or something in the food to make him... Oh, you know what it is? It's because he never actually eats while he's here, because all the food is in your <laughs> imagination. Definitely. Who knows how long this is? I mean, we've got a montage scene here. <laughs> well, look at that claymore. Holy crap. Ooh. Lost Boy's got some pretty wicked weapons. I know. <laughs> Apparently, it's still actually the first day That's a good right. point. first met him, because... He has not had food yet. <laughs> right, they've never even tried to have dinner yet. Hey, Fabio. Or sleep. Right. Though it was night when you saw him. Good point. <laughs> well, Neverland, I mean, 
Bang Maybe it could be like a different planet almost. I mean, they did go to the second star on the right, or third star on the right, straight on till morning. No, so. it's, it's the second star. Not the second third. star. I don't know okay. what the third star is. That'll probably take you, you know, to... To Michael uh, Jackson. Yeah, to, to the wrong Neverland. <laughs> wrong place. Look, look how hairless her Robin oh, Williams here. is. <laughs> Man, even earlier in the scene when you could see his arm, it wasn't that hairless. So how, <laughs> how much time did the Lost Boys spend shaving him? <laughs> With the suspenders, it totally reminds me of Mort from Mort. Oh, yeah, I wonder if that was on purpose. <laughs> nanu, nanu. Nanu, nanu. <laughs> oh, His gosh. nipples are fucking eyes. Oh, it's great. <laughs> no more beer for you, Will. You're swearing too much. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> See, I again, mean, what's just the sticky stuff? Yeah. This, Ow. I mean, if it's still sticky at this point, then it just, like, instantly turns to mud. <laughs> like, the moment he goes through the colors, it just turns to mud. Right. <laughs> that was great. He has a piece of chalk just stuck to a... Letter opener? What, what's on this hook now? <laughs> yeah, it's just like a pointer. I mean, apparently, it's sharp enough to just like penetrate chalk without a problem, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of scary, actually. But he makes a good oh, point. Oh, cool. He's trying to teach the, kid, the children why parents hate their children. And uh, <laughs> at, at the beginning of this, like, Robin Williams basically hates his children at this point. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a parent yet myself, but is, is, any parents out there listening, is that. Is that true? Do you, do you guys just all resent your children and because you used to stay up together every night just to watch the sunrise, but now you can't do that because the little buggers is running around all the time? Hell, I don't think I've ever seen the sunrise. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I want to know why they haven't given these children at least something different to wear. Like this, uh, Peter Pan's daughter just wears her night clothes the entire time. It's like, yeah. have, some, have a little sensibility. Like, well, I guess they don't really have any clothes that would fit them, for one thing. The Lost Boys sure would, but not the Pirates. Are you kidding maybe, me? Maybe it's He a... dresses Peter Pan's son up just like himself in a later well, scene. that's probably because that was his outfit when he was a little boy. <laughs> he wasn't a little boy, he's an adult! <laughs> Captain Hook used to be a little boy. He might have... He's, he's been a ship captain for a long time. You know, maybe that's how little boys dress where he's from. They dress in Victorian era, you know, <laughs> coats and stuff with wigs. <laughs> I like his little uh, brooch right in the center. For all we know, school. he was born with that mustache. I don't know. <laughs> what just, do we really know about James Hook? <laughs> he just came out of his mother full grown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The pain. <laughs> Especially with that hook hand trying to hold on as they pull him out. Oh, look at that. He wrote that F upside down. Yeah, Smee has a lot of talents. He does. I don't know why he's not <laughs> Is that Captain a Hook? Gryffindor flag behind Hook? <laughs> does it, do any of these children actually, like, communicate with Smee? Does anybody communicate with Smee except Is for Shmi Captain really Hook? There? Exactly. <laughs> there goes another one of Captain Hook's many mental illnesses. Yeah, he actually has imaginary friends, and that's all Smee is. Yeah. Well, no, because, you know, Smee appears in other places and stuff like that. So. He does appear Interesting in other places, theory, though. But Captain Hook's the only one that talks to him. <laughs> Tinkerbell doesn't talk to him. The whore talked to him. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. I don't like this. This, this taught me as a child, it was trying to teach me that girls are smarter than boys. And I don't know if that's true. <laughs> uh, nice cross eyed look from Jack there. I would say yes. For the sheer fact that... Uh, you because know, you're married, you are legally obligated <laughs> to admit that girls are... As the only married man here. Oh, look at Robin Williams. He's creaking around yeah, like that, an old man. That looks like me after my first day of P90X. Oh, man. That used to kick my butt. I don't know. I'd say yoga kicks my butt more than I'm, I'm that. I'm glad I'm the only one laughing at my own show. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Mike. Good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, which way to the gym? A-hole. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Okay, but, okay so, so this dinner looks good, but then it's revealed that there's nothing. But when... Their imaginations kick in, and you see what they have to eat. Did it not look delicious when you first oh, saw this? Man. I was not like, this still is like delicious. Heaven. Yeah, it still right? looks, yeah, it still looks delicious. It's like, what do you call that dish? I want to make it. I know. I'm like, I want to imagine food like that. They just it? eat mashed potatoes that are dyed different colors <laughs> the uh, entire time. If that's all that is, <laughs> that's a lot of starch. I don't know, man. 
Okay, that the larger kid. I won't call him fat because you know he's still young. But uh, that's McKenzie. He sits down on the end and he lifts all the kids up. That means he weighs the equivalent of like five, six hundred pounds, nine hundred pounds. <laughs> How much that is? <laughs> yeah, if each kid weighs about sixty pounds on average, and there's like ten of them on a row. Wow, yeah. This is like one of my favorite scenes. It really is because it's not only is it like him getting back in touch with his childhood, he's starting to, you know, realize that, you know, yeah, I was a kid once. I did have these right abilities to to project things, to, to see a, a whole other world inside your mind. And yeah. But like the when it comes to like him and Rufio going back and forth, oh right. It's so funny. This is the first time that I've understood what a paramecium was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a line I always think of if I think of something really small. Or, it's, it's, it's between that and a line on Ninja Turtles when Krang says to Shredder, I refuse to give you one more iota of my technology <laughs> until you build me a body. <laughs> it's like, what's an iota? Yeah, I'm like an iota? That must be something really small. Like iota do what? You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, oh, we gotta let Evan do it. He's the drummer. What? The rim shot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's why we bring him. <laughs> I wonder how much Tinker Belly eats. Huh? I don't know. Three ounces? Minimum. Probably as much as a swallow. <laughs> but she can obviously carry more than a coconut because she carried Peter all the way to Neverland. Right? <laughs> yeah, she probably does eat as much as a swallow it depends. because she's she an, so good at it. Is she an African or European <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why is Robin Williams the same size as these kids if he's sitting on the same bench as them? Is he though? Yeah. Is he? Are they all sitting on stools? I would that? assume so because the fat kid sat on the other side of that and lifted all those same kids up. <laughs> so maybe they only have a bench on that one side. Maybe he just found a weak spot and broke through because he's a fatty. Oh, <laughs> poor kid. Kind of like Bomber on the Hobbit. Yeah, it's it's. They're all imagines. None of them are actually there. It's just Peter trying to you know. <laughs> Rufio's the only actual one there. Peter jumped out of window. Farm factory! <laughs> yeah, really, he's just been lying there in London the whole time. This is all some deranged dream of his from the alcohol he was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually how they play it off. He wakes up on the streets with me sweeping up the alcohol bottles around him. Definitely, where those bottles come from. Oh, having trouble with the missus. <laughs> You've been there before, right, Will? No, I'm not to wake up in the snow drunk. <laughs> Maybe on the couch. Not again, but... anyway. No, I'm just kidding. Dude. I mean, I did have an experience where I went to Neverland when I was, uh, <laughs> you know, in trouble and drunk. But <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> I swear, you man, <laughs> stupid yeah. man. Nice comeback, Rufio. Oh snap. People of our paramecium brain. brain. There it is. Woo. Munching on your arm, mucus. Suffering from Peter Pan envy. That sounds a little Freudian. That's a paramecium brain. <laughs> Who can't fly. <laughs> you know, paramecium's can't fly. Maybe they can at least fall with style. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Ban oh, they I never noticed they're cheering banning Benny, before. Benny. Thank you, bangering. subtitles. So, bangering is actually a... Uh, Pretty sure it's like a donkey punch. Oh, man. I'm just <laughs> Evan, would you be so kind as to look up the bangering thing? It was uh, like a... Jamaican slang. Jamaican slang for like overcoming, being powerful. Oh. Yeah. That means they had a Jamaican lost boy at some point. Definitely. I mean, they're on an island. Yeah. So, where did weed at? <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know that there's got to be some kind Stevie of herb right in Neverland that's like primo, right? Oh. Okay, so here it is. Here's, here's their dinner. See, it's not all mashed potatoes. Right? It's like roast beast and who hash. <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh, pie that up. looks like it was created out of like... Yeah, those, pies, got the jello. those pies are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it probably tastes like those like colored tootsie rolls though. I don't know. Maybe Blood like oranges. Right. Chud butt. Chud butt. Why does that cheese? The cheese say chud says butt? chud butt with the fat kid's face. He, oh. he made it himself. <laughs> it does have his face on it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> chud butt. I think that's our new catchphrase that we're pulling over from the movie. <laughs> See you later, chud butts. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, chud butt? <laughs> 
So it's so funny. I uh, I was sitting in class the other day and we were talking movies. I was talking movies with this other girl because a lot of the classmates I was with don't really like find a lot of interest in movies. Right. And uh, I'm like, For you shit. know, I call my I call the people that we that listen to the podcast cinephiles. Yeah, and she's like, I use that constantly, and I cannot take credit for it. Like, cinephile. Word cinephile. Yeah. Yeah, I got it from uh, the Lonely Island. You know, yeah. Andy Samberg. Watch Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> Past like funny. the first two three episodes because the first two two or three episodes are so Andy Samberg heavy, yeah. but the character development and a little Andy Samberg else. goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, and the character development of the rest of the show just clicks so well it's huh. so good so once they took the focus off Andy Samberg quite as much it actually got good it got really good imagine that no, <laughs> uh, who's the uh, big buff guy Terry uh, Cruz. Terry Cruz. Terry Cruz. Yeah. they were talking about like making him Luke Cage in the upcoming Luke Cage Netflix oh that would series. be cool that would be perfect they were also talking about another role for him which uh, uh, they being the Geek Show podcast they were talking about uh, using Terry Cruz for another Role and I'm like, yeah, that would be perfect. Uh -huh. <laughs> Terry Crews is brilliant, other than in. Oh, sorry, gotta cut my thought short. There's Robin Williams all doused in food, holding yeah, a sword. He, he finally gets it. I guess it only took him what, like about 18 hours, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he's the best that's not order. too bad. Tink was right, man. You don't even need three days. He's like ready now. <laughs> This is a good negotiator. She started high. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably a smart move. If you want people to think of you as a miracle worker. Oh, this is a good scene between the two of them. Thud. What does he say? Thud. Yeah. Thud is the big kid's name. We finally figured it out. I haven't known yeah, for he 20 him. years. I've been watching this and I haven't known. So Thud, during this, he gives the marbles back to him. And right. he, he really lost his marbles. But, uh... <laughs> It's a he great like, gag when you're 10. Do you notice that he goes to, like, move something out of his face? Like, he, like, runs his finger from his forehead back to his sign language? Ears. It's not. It's not uh, sign language at all. I'm wondering, like, what it is. Did, did he have long hair before this? Does he have, like, dreads underneath that <laughs> hat? You know? I always figured it was some Maybe kind of, like... Maybe he's the Jamaican that I figured it was some kind of, hearing. like, secret sign or combination or something like that that the Lost Boys had. But I, I don't know, like... Just FYI, Will actually knows a lot of sign language and took some classes on it. And we had thought about doing the podcast in sign language until we realized that it probably wouldn't go very far. Yeah, a lot of people don't want to see what I look like. Like, uh, <laughs> I do a lot of crazy things with my hands. Well, yeah, Projecting well, I, my voice. I got right now. I'm shaking my hands. No, here. I think we should still do a whole YouTube channel where you just transcribe the podcast with sign language, so you know our deaf viewers can. Uh, not anyway, uh, <laughs> I got a couple people that can translate. Oh, that. oh, here's the part where uh, Peter's daughter is singing, and like everybody, like it just melts their hearts, including mine. There's Russell Brand. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Like every pirate in this movie looks like Russell Brand. <laughs> <laughs> wow, like uh, Captain Hook is smoking two cigars at one time right now. <laughs> That's how he rolls. I have a hard time smoking one cigar, and he's fucking. <laughs> Double barrel in there. I don't think they're. He's uh, hot boxing the Jolly Rock. Maybe know. they're just blunts. Like, you know? Wow, what's that music, dude? I like these jams. <laughs> Is that that little girl? Bangerang. It's amazing. Bangerang. I don't know how long she's been wearing those PJs, but they do not have a stitch of dirt on them, no matter what she's been through. Also, because she's just. I mean, she's what? Been in the net in some nice room, maybe? Um, I, I do. You know, you brought up about how the kids haven't changed their clothes in forever, but. I don't know, like, I, I, they might be able to get away with it, because I'm pretty sure when I was that age, I could go, like, five days and not need a shower or change my clothes. Hell, I haven't changed my underwear in two weeks. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm wear them until they kind of disintegrate and disappear into nothingness. <laughs> uh, that's a great well, view. Where's gone? Yeah. I remember seeing, uh, there's that one magazine that comes out quarterly or something like that called Cinefix. Uh -huh. And I, it's probably out of publication now because of the internet and stuff like that. Yeah, thanks a lot, internet. Thanks, internet! As, as we watch this movie, thanks to Netflix. No, <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, uh, I'm, th there was a lot of shots like that where they had... It wasn't just a matte painting, but it was a moving matte painting. And that's how they did a lot of these exterior shots. Wow, Neverland has three moons. Not only does it have three moons, but it's got a compass rose, like, right in the middle of the ocean... Just so perfect. I enjoy huh. this nervous tick. Yeah. yeah, his mustache. Does your mustache do that, Sean, when you hear clocks ticking away or like somebody's 
turn signal in a car or something. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the watch didn't make any noise this entire time until it just like <laughs> randomly drops out of his hand. Maybe maybe because he hit it like the watch on Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Walken. <laughs> I heard this. I hit this on some piece of metal up my. Ass. Yeah, what was that, Sean? Exactly. The podcast can't hear you. I heard hit this piece of metal up my. Ass. <laughs> so first, your father gave it, it to me, and now I'm giving it to you. Now, I... is that a clock? <laughs> Whoa! See, Smee comes out of nowhere. He came literally out of nowhere to stop him from killing that child. That's his subconscious, let's, right let's there. Let's face it. Smee is like. The, the guy actually running the show. And I, I think he is very smart to do it like this and make Captain Hook the figurehead because, you know, his hook is not only a symbol, but at the same time, everyone's trying to poison him instead of Smee. Yeah. <laughs> they need to so, make a remake of this movie. Call it uh, Neverland Fight Club. Neverland, Neverland Fight, Fight Club. Club. <laughs> where Smee is just the Tyler Durden of the whole thing. <laughs> Winds up fucking stabbing himself. Oh my gosh. Him. There's got to be a way that we Freaking. can re edit this movie for a trailer like that. The yeah. reason why the prostitute called out Smee at the beginning of the movie was because that's what Captain Hook likes to be called. Smee! <laughs> 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 right, since uh, Smee is a Tyler Durden-like projection of everything he wants to be. That's what, they, that's what you, he just has him, like, call out during sex. Smee! 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 <laughs> oh, Crazy. we just went to rated R. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rated R for ridiculously awesome. Rated R because it's a pirate R. movie. <laughs> <laughs> now we're back to kid jokes. <laughs> Hold on. Well, this is this is weird. This the, again, this is another neurosis of of Captain Hook that he has a whole room full of clocks, despite the fact that he hates them. Right. Just so and he can smash them, them. And he's a hoarder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a hoarder too. Clearly. And not a single one of them has any hands. When except you're a, for the one that points to 420. No. When, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you were a kid, you, the first time you saw this movie, didn't you uh, want a room full of clocks that you could just go smashy smashy on? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, like, I kind of want one these. now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Sean. In this place, we're making a room full of clocks to smash. Find the room. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all our rooms are taken up. So where are the couches in our living room? <laughs> it's a full house. Oh, oh, here he goes with the mallet. He's gonna... Yeah, yeah screw chocolate you, chocolate milk, milk bubbles. <laughs> good form. Yeah, that's the first time I think I ever heard good form yeah. in this movie. Really? It's like part of my... Part of the words that I use. Like if somebody does something good, I'm like, good form! Oh, good form. <laughs> Top draw. And of course, I have all the friends oh, that don't sure. understand. Like, <laughs> <Captain> <laughs> right, yeah. my joke. Your father was never there, Jack. How do you know that, huh? <laughs> creep. I'm a creep. Oh, please don't start with Alanis Morissette. Uh, he's gonna start. I'm a winner. It's Radiohead. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh no, I'm thinking of I'm a bitch. I'm a lover. I'm. Uh. That's not Alanis Morissette either, is it? Isn't it? No, that's like uh, Natalie Abruglia or something. <laughs> Whoever it was, it's they were one terrible. of those '90s, you know, yeah. songs that all sound the same because they're all grunge and horrible. Right. <laughs> oh, thank goodness that's over. <laughs> Except for Pearl Jam, I guess that's you know that carries oh, over. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on who you ask. I'm like the one person that hates Nirvana. Yeah. So no, I'm with you. Oh, Holy, you hate man. Nirvana too? I do. I, gotta, I, I totally hate I Nirvana. I'm so glad. I go listen to Tool. Nirvana. You're the real OH, the no. original hipster. But my problem with Nirvana is you, you can't go a day listening to the radio. I drive a truck for a living, right? So I'm driving around listening to the radio. And all the time they play the same, not, not only the same three songs, but every now and then, like you're listening to a station, you hear Nirvana, you turn to another station, they're playing it. And I'm like, he's been dead for 25 years. Music has gotten better since then. Quit playing it. So, I don't like Nirvana because I don't like being lied to. That's why it makes You know, I don't like being lied to. And oh, he's yeah. like, and I swear that I don't have a gun. Trigger toe, bam! Oh, Blows man, his brains out. Joke. Maybe so too soon. <laughs> too soon? George Carlin didn't believe in too you soon. You gotta bleep me now. 
Great, now we're going to have to edit this podcast yeah. for the first time. <laughs> Never. Nah, it's all right. If you're offended, sorry. Ooh. Haters are going to hate. Whatever. Oh, oh look at their pirate disguises. Not it's only great. that, but you're going to see Robin Williams in mascara. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's all rosy. He's, yeah, but he still pulls off like an executive transvestite kind of feel. Definitely. <laughs> well, what's up with that? She like pulls off a sock. Oh. Because <laughs> she's a whore. <laughs> she's paid to do that. Yeah. You have to make a sensual... I don't why see why he, he puts oh. his cup on his hook so he has to keep his arm at like a 90 degree angle <laughs> and then he has to like <laughs> Maybe that's, that's how just, he like gets his workout <laughs> on and builds his So did Jack teach them how to play baseball? Is that what's going on here? No, of course not. It was and Captain someone, Hook because mitt? What you <laughs> Yeah, like some, some uh, seamstress or something like that made him a leather mitt overnight for this game. He put on the goblet, but they're like, no, 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 screw it. He's going to have to keep it at night. Put a mitt on his hand. Oh, well, no, he just grabbed the... See, he's holding the goblet in his good hands. Uh, okay. And they took it off to put the mitt on. But still. <laughs> they had to put Does the mitt on. Does he really expect Romney? to catch anything with uh... that mitt? I mean, come on. <laughs> Let's get a little realistic movie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think it's cool that, like, you know, he's, he's doing this game with the Lost Boys and stuff like that, but then he, he actually sees his son play in baseball for the first time and really becomes proud of him. Do you know what? And I almost think gets funny. them all killed. <laughs> not only is not only are both teams called the Pirates. Uh, <laughs> I never noticed. But their traditional garb looks exactly like the Pirates costume from back in the day in like early baseball. Yeah. Oh really? Huh. He can't do it. No one can. Jafar, Jafar, he's our man. If, if he, he can't, can't do, do it, it, great! Another great Robin Williams part. <laughs> right? Uh, like, the guy just shoots him. <laughs> Baseball he's would be way back. more interesting if that actually happened in the game, I think, in the MLB. I don't know. I like uh, ba uh, the movie Basketball is a yeah. version of it, where they just throw a linebacker into the field. <laughs> and when he goes to Why? slide in at 30, he just tackles him. <laughs> Why that hasn't become a real sport when we have, like, what, NFL Blitz? Out there? No, that's a video game. What am I thinking of? <laughs> Yeah, the the play is like the indoor game. Right, right, the indoor arena football and stuff. We need to have basketball. Definitely. <laughs> I'm down to play Come basketball. Come on, Matt. Matt. Matt Trey Parker, Parker and Matt Stone. <laughs> Let's quit making Book of Mormon musicals and get to... No, make more Book of Mormon musicals. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I know. <laughs> That's actually coming to town. Yeah. And, yeah, well, how do you get tickets? Can we get tickets? Yeah, Just Rose Wagner. Or it's not the Rose Capitol Wagner. It's the Capitol Theater. Theater. Uh, I, Ooh, it's been all redone. I've heard it's like we now we sound like a bunch of theater geeks. Right. That's all right. <laughs> if Chris Hardwick can get away with it, so can we. <laughs> yeah, because we're so. On the level yeah. <laughs> because you know we do like three podcasts a week, two uh, TV shows. Uh, <laughs> you know, if I was Someone an alcoholic, who's, who's had, and it, I was like episode <laughs> two for us, and he has like six hundred by yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're just about That's 500. right, Chris Hardwick. We're coming for you. <laughs> We're coming for you, Chris Hardwick, like The Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> I really I'll give you some dead to, to talk about. The game after this because he just hit the only ball out That's of my jack. That's uh, true, yeah. <laughs> they don't have any other baseballs. The game's over now. Yeah, yeah. very bonds of Neverland. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they've got ice cream. They've got, like, an ice cream stand. I ice cream. I think I want to become technology. a pirate. I know, right? They make it look awesome. <laughs> These kids are missing out. They're missing out on popcorn, ice cream, baseball games. You know, Neverland has has pirate, has pirates, mermaids, little kids for whatever reason, um, uh, Indians. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised though with all the pirates around. What would get rid of the pirates a lot quicker is if they had ninjas, <laughs> right? Yeah. Why isn't there a tribe of ninjas on the other side of the <laughs> island, like living in you know big? Oh, what, what do they call those with the the multi layered buildings that they have there? You know, Adobe's. What I mean. Like Dojos. the ones in Kyoto and stuff. Yeah. Dojos. Dojos. Uh, <laughs> no, pag pagodas? Pagodas. Is that, is yeah, that's it. it. Or did pagoda. I just make that word up? I can't No, tell. pagodas. Real word. Oh, no. Thud's mad. Thud's way mad. Oh, but look. He's just trying to fly. That's what it looks... Okay, now, as we all know, the secret to flying is you throw yourself at the ground and miss. No, the secret <laughs> flying is mascara. Look at his face. That's the secret point. to flying... <laughs> Is actually hard drive. I love this. No, we're too high. <laughs> Less is more. <laughs> he has to climb down a few things. Oh. Ow. You, you're not that bleeding in yourself, hurt. Peter. There he goes uh, yeah. <laughs> He's an old man. How do you, that must have been Robin Williams' stunt double. Oh, here's I the baseball. I am so surprised with how hard his son hit that ball. Like, that's that's Neverland. Land. Here it comes five hours later and knocks him straight on the dome. That little laugh that he does right there. It, it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
He kind of falls down. There oh, he and then he sees his reflection. And what do we see in the reflection? A ginger, and he's not a ginger. <laughs> Gingers have no souls. No, I actually had a dream the other night that, like, I was looking in the mirror, and it was myself, but like, I have a beard right now. And I was clean-shaven, but, like, I looked like I was about 20 or 30 years older, and I had I had long gray hair, and I was wearing glasses again, which is weird because I had LASIK, too. And it's like... But, but it was one of those weird things where I saw myself, like my future in, in 20 or 30 years, and my future self was looking at me going like, Make, take stock of your life, accomplish your goals. <laughs> and I, it was like one of those things where you wake up from it and you just feel weird, like it was too real. Good revelation. Yeah. I man. enjoy <laughs> how he sees his shadow for the first time and he actually like looks at the camera for half a second. <laughs> like, he's like, what a <laughs> Everybody else catch that? Good. <laughs> I guess this is a... Uh, I mean... Past the dinner scene where he like starts using his imagination, now he's actually like looking at his reflection and noticing the imagination. Another right. thing is, I never knew the tree to look like the trees from Game of Thrones that have faces. <laughs> I mean, it's a heart oh, tree the for Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, uh, uh, and there's all the lost. Boys, and they had the same the locksmith from boys. Princess Bride that made the pit of despair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think. <laughs> I can't even think about Tron to escape. <laughs> That's a man. See, one day again, when when I become a a, a, a famous billionaire, a billionaire playboy. philanthropist playboy, <laughs> when I become a Hard mad Hulk. genius yeah. with my own secret layer, it's definitely going to have a bunch of secret entrances and and uh, and you know little hidden rooms and stuff yes. like that. I'm just gonna build the house from Clue and have like a thing from the conservatory <laughs> yeah. to the kitchen. And... I'm gonna hire Tim Curry as my butler too because. Yeah. <laughs> because Why not? And then every Halloween, yeah. <laughs> every Halloween he has to dress like that. Every Halloween I'll dress as uh, Doctor Frankenfurter, and he <laughs> yeah. can be Brad, you know, for all I care. As so, long as he dresses as darkness at least once it once in a while. I don't know if you guys know what darkness is. It was his first Excuse film. Darkness. I am darkness. <laughs> oh, that's Brothers. Brothers. Tom Cruise is in that. He's... Legend? Legend. Legend. Oh, that's watch, what it is. Should we watch yeah. Legend next? Oh, I can... Watch something else. I don't know. It's, I don't... I'd be really okay to... Yeah, the, the guy that does the, the well, scale double. Well, next time I'm double. here. We can never... Oh. We can just, like, never watch The Labyrinth. Because the entire podcast will just be me singing every word to every song, you know? <laughs> just, it'll just be the musical. It will become a sing-along then. You're about yeah, to be the babe. What babe? babe with, with the power. power. What power? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, now, I, I, I've watched enough movies. It's a kiss. Like, this is the kind of thing I would never notice before, but I've watched enough movies with girls and with my sisters that looking at Julia Roberts' dress in this and her hair, it's so early 90s. It's so so good. Look at those puffy yeah. sleeves. Oh, my goodness. Look at the way they tease her hair up. It's so poofy. <laughs> Still, I don't know. There's something about you know when they have pointed elf ears. It's, it's kind of hot for me. Maybe that's a nerd thing. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think it's just uh, like, uh, it's just like a Julia Roberts thing too. Like I don't know. Pretty yeah, woman I and there's Josh, by the way. Oh yeah, this Josh. here's Josh, Sean's younger brother, recently returned hero from the Air Force. How's it going, podcast? We support our <laughs> troops. That's right. Whoop. We support our police too. In Inside, I gotta get real for a second. Inside of these riots that are happening because of the Tremont Williams, yeah, Tremont Williams things and everything like that. Like, cops are taking a lot of negative cred. So I just want to say, like, I support our police as long as they're not shooting people. Like, if you're a respectable police officer and you're really upholding the law as you should be, I have all the money. A utmost respect for you. Yeah, I think there's more good guys than bad when it comes to that. There so, definitely you know, is. Thanks it for is... doing a good job out there, guys. And you know, you know, nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. Everyone's probably doing their best, but you know, keep it up. It's it's just the, you know, every now and then crap happens. It really sucks, but you know, just we gotta keep doing our best and have a little understanding. But and it goes both ways. So just think about all the people that we kill in war, all the children that lo that are lost. We don't write over that. It's a, it's, it's a good point. But we're gonna get back to the movie here. Yeah, does that, what's up with Robin Williams' baby hair? I actually like that or you Peter Pan's baby hair. Serious moment, right? The serious moment of the movie. Yeah, the oh, serious yeah. moment's <laughs> happening in the movie. I mean, Interesting. Yeah. Maybe we should just like get rid of this. Wait, how old is Tinkerbell then? Not only that, why Same does age. he have Toodles Bear? <laughs> he has Toodles Bear in this film or in this part. Yeah, well, no, because that's his bear. To Toodles had his own bear. But that's his bear that he just found in the in the tree while we were just hopping on our soapbox there for a minute. Uh, it actually looked just like 
Toodles Bear, though. It does. Like I maybe they it, made a bear for Toodles, Toodles Bear based after Peter's Toodles, Bear. Toodles, his bear, and then the Jolly Roger in the scene with Toodles. Oh, and look, at, he's got it. Look at little boy Peter. He's got the coolest hair. Oh man, that's hair sad. Is Dustin Hoffman's son. I used to rock that hair. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, still probably would, hair. except you got that military uh, yeah. high and what, what do they call it? High, uh, high and tight. High and tight. Thank high you. High and tight to get the tight curls. Look at his shadow. It looks so fake. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, it's pretty good. He's like pulling his shadow along, and it's no, it looks it's like Mary no, Poppins esque. It, I know. I was just trying to be you know. <laughs> yeah, my oh look, it's it's uh you. it's Pepper Potts. It is Pepper Potts. <laughs> You better go red alert, girl. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is before she got all uh, extremists. Yeah. You know, she's still really pretty in this. Like, she her hair is like, it looks a lot thicker and less red. What was she? She was like 20 and something she is in again. this. Nah, she was like 16. I don't, is, I don't know. No, because I'm not going to She's She's this. like 10 years older than me, so she's like 20. And, and here's Mag and then, or Maggie Smith at her actual age. Then, right? Yeah, yeah without the old point. age makeup. She's like 56. Peter Pan's like, 12. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I think Peter oh, but I do have this granddaughter. A full family. Yeah. <laughs> this multi-generational banging. They have children of their own. Uh, <laughs> I'm a professor now. It's a school. So is Neverland like uh, the hyperbolic time chamber? It's based on Time Lord technology. See, right back to the TARDIS <laughs> and like the. It all is. The Gallifreyans were all over England, so I mean, it's like you know, it makes sense. A hard day's night poster. Yeah, what? <laughs> that's awesome. Go Beatles. Right. <laughs> I never noticed. Oh, that look, before. her calendar or whatever is also John and Re or John and uh, Paul. Yeah, from what I actually she know, England. time doesn't really pass in their Neverland. That's why Hook's there because he's afraid of dying. Yeah, definitely. Oh, Good point. Yeah, huh. Hook is afraid of dying. It has less to do with his revenge against the Gator and pa and Peter Pan as it does just he's outrunning death. I wonder how long the life of a fairy is because I mean even Julia Roberts hasn't aged oh. as Tinkerbell. Right. Yeah. Must, they're, they're or more Tinker more Hell. Right. Again, she's yeah. gonna refer to her as Tinker Hell from here on out. <laughs> For every movie now with Julia Roberts. She's in Neverland, so she doesn't age. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's very That's true. That's true too. Well, that and I'm sure Pixies don't age, do they? They, they must. I, I guess. Don't know. Pixies from so, Portugal, somebody yeah. pesky, on the internet, pixie, find this pesky, out. Pesky. <laughs> what is the Tolkien-esque lore Daddy. on Pixies nowadays? I'm just saying, a nice Pixies. Oh, there's Jack. He's a baby. Magically appear? That must be really awkward to give birth. <laughs> <laughs> after his daughter born, or after this point, like, he's so happy to be a daddy. After that, he absolutely hates his children. <laughs> Until he goes to Neverland, he just hates them. <laughs> <laughs> that means that his daughter was an accident, right? <laughs> <I guess so>. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's floating. Yeah, okay, so he finds his happy thought as his son, and that's super sweet. And I'm sure that's really how it is for most parents, as long as, again, I think that the moral of the story is don't get so caught up in your job and, and in yourself that you just forget the people that matter most. And they will become your happy thought. Are you ready for a superhero fly. change? Here comes the superhero change. Yeah, like Break the through. Boom! He totally Instant pulls Peter a Peter Pan costume. Yeah, he totally pulls like a Superman or whatever, like yeah. super, or like a is it the Flash that keeps it in a ring? Does he do that on the show? In a ring? Yeah, he keeps his costume in a little ring, no, pops out, he changes real quick. Green Lantern. No, he doesn't. No, no. well, no. Okay, Green Lantern has like he has a power ring. Yeah. But the Flash, like, yeah, he like keeps his... Silver no, the Flash, Age Flash is so fast or something he can like that. change like. Well, yeah, but but it's because he used to keep his costume in a ring. It's, That's it's, cool. it's like a joke on the Warner Brothers cartoon. Anyway, never mind. That's actually, that seems more sensible because, I mean, he would have to run all the way back to Star Labs to change. <laughs> right, right. Or Spider-Man and keep it on underneath, I guess, kind of. The, who cares about uh, the, spider uh, <laughs> the North. Oh, the N? The uh, Compass Rose? Compass Rose. Yeah. They must be on an island near Rand McNally. <laughs> <laughs> where Rand they wear, McNally. <laughs> where they wear hats on their feet and hamburgers eat people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's his underoos. Oh, now he's like snap. David Bowie. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> he does the uh, whole Jim Carrey thing in uh, Dumb oh, and yeah. Dumber where he's like running in place. Dumb makes like... you feel like running at incredible speed. <laughs> Speaking of which, I really want to see that new movie. It's not. I hope good. it's dumb, better it's, than Dumb and Dumber. Even it's though that it's movie terrible. Is I saw Dumb and Dumber two, and it's dumb. 
Well, wow, okay, look at those that shorts. was dumb of me. <laughs> look at those shorts. Yeah, the last time I tried to wear something like that, some rich boys kicked my ass. <laughs> no, seriously, all about. It's one of those movies where all the best parts are on the preview, and it's one of those Farley yeah. Brothers movies where, like, the, the the one was more situational comedy, the first dumb number. This one just kind of goes for weird gross outs that are really yeah. stupid. It's, my favorite. I don't know. It's not my type of humor. I my guess. favorite Farley Brother uh, movie still to this day is Kingpin. I love that movie. I just watched that the other day. I watched it last night. Like it's part of my. I feel dumb. I've never seen. It. Oh, here you think Rufio is totally gonna murder him? He's got that look on his face. You up and the man. No, but it's cool that he he you know accepts Peter as the leader. I didn't even mean to rhyme that. Thank you. Gives him the sword. Yeah, he like. Oh, what's the word? He gives him the pants. He just admits defeat and knows you know when he's bested and is really cool and honorable about it. Oh, my brother and I still say that to each other all the time. Like, you are the pan. <laughs> he draws the line. And they all join him, including Rufio, who, like, I, I love how he just declares him as Peter Pan right. now and announces him with, with all the stuff that he says right here. The rooster. You can fight. You can fly. Crow. You can... Crow. And he doesn't let him finish. You can, and he crows. Ah, oh, it's making me feel all tingly in my heart places. Feel like a kid again. <laughs> well, I guess it makes you feel like uh, you're back in Neverland, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you're a kid again. Ah, <laughs> uh, Steven Spielberg's good at that. And Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like I say, after three days, he loses like 60 pounds. Not only that, but apparently he has like magical hairspray <laughs> capabilities because all of a sudden his hair sways back. And That's all just what your hair looks like when you don't shower for three days. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been working out the whole time. That's a lot. Well, look, moons, yeah. look at one night, <laughs> moons all went from from full moons to crescent moons like that. They have some horrible pollution. Look how red that sky is. Oh, this is weird. This, so here's the here's the bad part: is Neverland makes you forget. So even though you're supposed to be childlike in life and stuff like that, and find your imagination, you can't forget about the important things. And know? Tink's being a complete That's creep. Where his <laughs> Thought I lost that. Or a thermometer. Well, don't leave home without it. <laughs> even in Neverland. I wonder how much MasterCard paid for that product placement. Right? <laughs> is he trying to throw I bet up? they maxed out their it? MasterCard. Nah. I see it as a mirror because it's useless here. Because only Visa's accept <laughs> Visa, it's everywhere. It's everywhere you want to be. You know, sir, it's breath mints. Can you imagine her trying to eat one? Oh, man. It'd have to, use it. of, It'd oh have to be God. a suppository <laughs> instead. Uh, it's kind of like her dating Peter at this point. <laughs> and those are shabby Dude. keys. <laughs> Who the hell drives a Chevy? <laughs> oh, she breaks her house. Uh, yeah, that's yeah cool. like, she tries to cheat with Peter. What kind of creep is she? I mean, she knows his past. He doesn't know his past. She's, like, taking advantage of him. Well, not to mention, she practically raised him, right? Like, yeah. it's more incestuous than Back to the Future. <laughs> why going big? Why, you know, I never when she, understood why she went big. When she goes big. So that she could make it with him. But then, like, he turns her down. And she's like, oh, okay. But at the like, same she's time. she's totally like, a, a, a harlot. <laughs> if she goes big. Pink with the pink for the win. <laughs> oh, God. Why aren't her wings doing the same thing? Because they're, like, constantly fluttering. I mean, you can kind of see them. She's just trying to downplay them right now so she looks silhouette. more human-y and not yeah. so, uh, like, pixie -y. She has elf ears, okay? You can't... Yeah, but can't pointy ears are hot. Wings are kind of weird. <laughs> He's already... I don't know. I like a girl who could fly me to work. I love a, I love a girl with wings. Come on! <laughs> Ooh... You just cheated on your wife, bro. Well, at least he uh, remembers and stops. So. Moira, there you go. It's not his fault. It's just what's up, whatever's in the water there, I guess. <laughs> his eyes are the still popping mermaid, right now. It's like he's cheating. I'm glad he remembered his girl's his girl's name. If it happens, Moira and Jack and cheating. what's her name? Margaret. I don't know who you're talking about, lady. But, oh, Maggie. Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> if See, it happens if... while you're sleeping, you're not cheating. <laughs> <laughs> like what happens shopping. in? What happens in Neverland stays in Neverland. Because <laughs> it never happens. The menu is like to come home for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but if dinner is imaginary, then did that even happen? <laughs> oh, oh, she oh, said a bad word. She said a way bad word. <laughs> she said no, no word. <laughs> That's not how Tinkerbell talks. Come on. Yeah, that was Julia Roberts doing Oh, this is cool. I put on their armor. 
<laughs> they just jump into yeah. pain and automatically stick. This kid just like unrolls it. I guess <laughs> I it'll protect you from pirate guns. Like Best <laughs> battle scene <laughs> ever. It's out our window. Oh, that's technology. what they're doing. They're using spider webs. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, uh, maybe, uh... Oh, should your upper arm have two bones like that? Oh, no, yeah. wait, one of them's yeah. a collarbone. I see. And then, yeah. One of them's your, what is it, clavia or something. Second best Your labia? Your Not your of. labia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the skull in front with the skeleton holding the sword. The skull right. in the back with the skeleton skull. Best ship ever. Seriously, dude. <laughs> the Jolly Rogers. I know, I like, uh, Davy Jones' ship on, uh, on Pi the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, I love this. I love this line that he says to him right here. Embrace yourself, lad, because this is really going to hurt. It's yeah, because you're dull. gauging your ear right yeah. now. <laughs> that's that's probably Hook's version of foreplay too. Embrace <laughs> yourself because this is really. If going this to was hurt. a modern movie, all the pirates would be hipsters and all the kids would be emo kids, and they have huge <laughs> gauges. And Rufio would be the exact same because he's like red and black. And he's yeah. got a Rufio of changes not a lick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was pretty talented there, Peter Pan. Uh, why couldn't you just do, like, a more resemblance? I didn't know that your entire legs were a triangle. <laughs> he cut it out like he's wearing a dress. I don't... Yeah. He cut it out as if he was a ginger. What the hell? <laughs> it is true. Time does fly, and so do you. <laughs> no, it's cool that all the pirates are afraid no, of No, seriously, like, look at the thing down there. It's exact... The part of the pirate ship, the sail, is cut out exactly like himself. Oh, like well, yeah, he did that on purpose. So but, up on his right I guess the uh, I guess the triangle in the center of his legs would just fall flat, but you didn't see that either. <laughs> it fell flat on the other way. side. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the thing is, how would you like to see a version of this movie? It, like, you, you can right, see they they, they, keep, they keep it kid friendly, but I mean, really, let's face it, this part should be like the bride and Kill Bill taking on the crazy eighty eight. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fly through pirates, blood going everywhere, <laughs> limbs flying. <laughs> you know. I don't know. I think uh, Peter Pan could take every one of these pirates, just grab them by the hair. Oh, he totally and could. Just drag them over the water and just like dunk them. So you land pal. Nice backflip. So during this movie, Julia Roberts was suspended for most of her scenes, you know, because she's Tinker Hell. So yeah. she actually had an assistant that was paid for this sole purpose. To clean her feet so it didn't look like she was walking. <laughs> How would you like that to be in your job description or on your resume where I clean Julia Roberts' feet for six months of filming? <laughs> I would. Clean every day. We don't mind sucking on Julia Roberts' feet. That's true. Some it's like, fetish guy. What but the doing? problem is if you I have to. I can only use my tongue to clean your feet, misses. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is if you go around claiming that you clean somebody's feet and that was like your main. <laughs> trait then wouldn't you be Jesus? Yeah. Cause he went uh, around cleaning people's feet. That was a, uh, Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene? Yeah, she was the whore who cried to clean Jesus' feet. She got paid to clean people's feet? Did Probably she get FJs? Jesus cleaned Jesus. Uh, I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> we'll right, well, uh, <laughs> Cotton sure, and Nick. Keep, keep it a little cleaner than that. Trapped like a fish. Peter Pan. More like Peter... Can't. Fin fan. <laughs> Fingering. This is this is pretty cool. Like I say, all the inventions and stuff like that, all the different stuff. When, when you're a kid, I know my I, well, my friend's dad hated this movie and just thought this was dumb. And I'm like, I think you're missing the point. Like the whole point of this movie is to not be like that, not be yeah. such a cynical old man and <laughs> wonder what the point is to everything. Sometimes things are just there because they're just cool. Like look at that boat. Do they really need a boat? I mean. You know, do, do they the way that all these guns and stuff like that work? They're silly, but that's but that's the point. And I just thought it was hilarious that my friend's dad was so jaded against this movie and thought all these things that all the kids are doing were so dumb. Yeah. And I'm like, then you need to watch this movie a lot more closely because right. it's just about looking at these things and not being like this. You know, exactly. Rufio's coolest that, outfit, like with yeah. the bones as his armor. It really everything. is the coolest armor, and it's cool watching them fight back to back. It's not very useful if he goes. Because somebody like stabs him, <laughs> but you know. Hey, I think he would have seen that coming. <laughs> yeah, go thud. Is he wearing a big pear on his Look head? at that, the, the chicken gun? That's awesome. <laughs> I forgot with the eggs. Yeah! <laughs> eggs are just chicken, period. I want some of those just to cook breakfast every morning. 
<laughs> when you eat a chicken's egg, it's like eating a chicken's period. Because yeah, it's an ovulation. Egg. Well, egg you vegan, <laughs> just saying. I gotta go care. vegan on that one. This is a waste of like a lot of good periods. <laughs> a waste of a lot of good periods. All right, no more drinking in this podcast. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do, I'm a lost boy. <laughs> oh, what, Robin Williams, Robin Williams, Inc. This is the best one, the marble shooter. Yeah. <laughs> that would hurt so bad. <laughs> it really would. They're like the kids' face is the best Yeah, part. they're jawbreakers. They're not even just marbles or candy. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Break your job when you do, do something, do something intelligent. intelligent. So he goes to Tyler Durden. He does the most intelligent thing. <laughs> he yeah, packs up gold and tries to get the hell out. <laughs> See, Smee just goes away because we all know that Smee does not exist. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, he does the thing that they should have done. Pierce, <laughs> Here we go. Here's your favorite part. We're yeah, here's where the, 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 the big guy becomes a ball oh, yeah. randomly. <laughs> the most impossible thing. Strike. And apparently he's heavy enough that he takes out like four or five pirates. <laughs> Fire! What are these tomatoes and stuff? Yeah, they're like the paint stuff. They're like paint tomatoes, like Neverland tomatoes. <laughs> Stand there. Uh, 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 man, man. Here comes the kid again. Gangway! Oh <laughs> <laughs> that was so that quick. <laughs> he just transforms into a ball. I remember so as a quick. kid, like trying to touch my own toes and be like, man, that kid's flexible. <laughs> not, yeah. not realizing that it's a, oh, this is a great gag. Boom! <laughs> right into the water. And then Seriously, they, the adult they, make the, they make the chubby kid the coolest one. And again, as a chubby 10-year-old myself, I loved that. Definitely. <laughs> like, it's about time we got our due. This, and then the triple cool pepper too. spray. This is like the spread gun from Contra. Like, it doesn't get much more <laughs> lethal than this. I always think that, like, each color, it may be a different color, but it's still, like, peppery, you know? Yeah, because it's it probably, burns. It kind of make, reminds me of the time I went to the Guar concert, and they were spraying that stuff out. You <laughs> went to a Guar concert? Yeah, yeah I've been to a Guar the, concert. The it's the coolest wicked. concert I've ever been to. The fake pig's blood. Yeah, they're like spraying, they like cut off Hitler's head, and they, yeah. the guys like run around without his head, it's spraying everywhere. So we got covered in like goo like that. So and awesome. afterwards, I stopped by the store like to pick up some cereal and stuff like that, and people were just staring at me like, what happened to you? I was like, hi, evening, how you doing? <laughs> I love how accurately they make uh, Peter Pan's son look to... Captain James Hook. Yeah, like, yeah, it's his little outfit. The outfit it. is so rad. Like, if I could buy, like, that outfit, I would probably spend, like... Well, it's, it's cool that there's... Cons- solid grand. It's really cool here, too, that there's consequences to this fight, and that Rufio, you know, he buys it, but they get their chance to actually fight. You know, you can tell they've both been looking forward to this for a long time. I just like how Hook does the Rufio chant. Yeah, yeah. Hook does, like, the Rufio <laughs> chant, but, like, just mocking like, him, like, yeah. calling him on. That's so <laughs> genius. Ain't you... Peter yeah. Pan. And the guy just jumps out of the window. <laughs> Seriously, there's like so the many good things. gags in this show. At least some pirates have sense, a little bit of sensibility. Like, yeah, oh, right. Peter Pan? Oh, I'm not the only one. <laughs> I can swim. I'm just going to go out there. <laughs> right? <laughs> Smart pirate. It's kind of like uh, that scene in Captain America where they, cut, where they throw the kid into the water. And Captain America runs over. He's like... I can swim. It's, I can swim. Go <laughs> get him. Yeah. Or like that other guy when, when they're all shooting guys in the second Captain America. He's like, look, I, I'll just sit down with my gun. I'm going to leave yeah, here. I hate working for these guys anyway. Or no, sorry. That's Iron Man 3. Iron yeah. Man 3. That's but, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Hydra doesn't even have right freaking the health benefits. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good gag. It makes you wonder why, if henchmen see all their comrades, like, dying left and right, why they keep trying. And <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, I give I up. Die. Right. <laughs> Henchmen are dumb. <laughs> they don't call them henchmen for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're not the mastermind. <laughs> That's cool. All the pirates, they give up their swords all like the formally. The yeah. That's really cool. I like how choreographed that was. Bang, I don't bang. Really know exactly what he sh- should do. Well, it's like, you know, this is back at a time when they, they come from a l- lands where fights were kind of honorable and had and their own color. Belly shirts were acceptable, like, for men. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that was the 90s and it was terrible. Nice move, Rufio, but I would not say enough. Rufio is a better swordsman than Hook is. I don't know. Hook is probably like way good. He's been around forever. Looky, he probably looky, practices I got all the time. Just <laughs> I, say that all the time. I still say it. Like, right. Well, he pulls a classic fencing move. I forget what it's called, but where he goes uh, to uh, carry. Well, where well, he goes to attack. He fakes him out on top, yeah, and then and then just does, goes for the quick strike. Mm-hmm. 
Did you have the term for it, Sean? Did you know what it was? I don't know. Oh, I, I thought, thought you I said thought something you heard like, him say it, yeah. Like what the move was called. I don't know if you took fencing classes as a kid. <laughs> I have a World of Darkness book that has the fencing moves in it. <laughs> I just call it a fakey dakey. A fakey dakey makey because it strips your mind of all. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. That's like one of the things I learned working at that school we worked at was one of the kids was telling the, the or one of the teachers was telling like the little preschool kids like, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Uh, <laughs> it's just called faint. Or you just um, take a shit and then you I get exactly it was a what you want. <laughs> hey, it was uh, a wig the whole time. What the hell? Oh, you didn't yeah. black hair? Take it. Uh, uh, I know Hooks isn't a wig. He's been <laughs> manicuring that hair forever. He was a little blue. Yeah, there's, there's, no, way like there could be a, there's yeah. no way that could be a wig. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all Hoffman. <laughs> I love the reunition <laughs> between uh, Peter Pan and his son because there's like no emotion well, there and, whatsoever. And, it's like, but, hey, but you surrogate. actually care about me? <laughs> the thing is, he's just lost a surrogate son with Rufio. And he doesn't want to lose another one. <laughs> surrogate so son, my ass! You do it for like two days! But, but what, what makes it a cool movie, <laughs> though, is that... You know, he does the right thing, he refuses the call to action, you know, that Hook does. He doesn't need to anymore, but Hook still calls him out, so we still get a satisfying final yeah. fight between the two of them. It's even though, true. even though, uh, he, Peter pulls a Goku, he gives him a chance to live. He gives him a chance to surrender and lets him know that, you know, this this fight's not worth it. Yeah. But, then, but then Hook gets all Frieza on him, yes, he and does. like calls him out and says, no, we're doing this. I don't care if what you say. If only he would have sliced him in half. Well, and, and it's a great, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's a great, it's it's a great call out, too, where he's just like, wherever you go, wherever you are, I vow there will always be daggers bearing notes signed James Hook. That is children's children's children. See, here's how his well, uh, three months no. obsessive compulsive disorder kicks in. He has to click down the... Oh yeah! Before he in goes order down. to attack him, he but he makes me to... do it though. He makes yeah. Tyler Durden do it, <laughs> uh, which is a fake imagination thing. Right, right. He sent a guy to protect his gold, and he thought was me. Forced rule about Pirate Fight Club. So is uh, Rufio's name at this time? Uh, his name Dead is meat? Robert. Oh. oh yeah, his name is Rufio. <laughs> his, his name, name is, is Rufio. Rufio. <laughs> In death, <laughs> they have a name. Rufio's the meatloaf of the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would do anything for Peter Pan. But I won't do that. But I'll die right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great, this is a cool sword fight. I yeah. like how their 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 swords uh, explode like like when you go to medieval times and watch that. Well, they did for like two seconds. Now down, 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 down. <laughs> I guess yeah, they realized it's an expensive fact. <laughs> it's yeah, like Goku when he gets you know. That sense where, oh, shit's about to go down, and the sparks start flying for yeah. that one brief second and that first initial blow between the two, you know? Right. And then at the that shadow. point, you're just to realize. The shadow is... Oh, yeah, again, yeah, with the shadows. Hands. Yeah. It's totally that motif that carries over. And it's got the motifs in this thing <laughs> down, all the little symbolisms and stuff. The expansion of this set, too, like, down to every last detail in this sword fight is just beautiful. You like, know, they didn't create this entire scene! What? They, they turned Peter Pan into a lawyer when he's an adult. Right. Hook in the books was actually a lawyer as well. Hook was, he was a lawyer in the book. That's huh. very true. I didn't know. So Peter was almost becoming so, the thing he hates most. Yeah, he did become Hook. Yeah. Huh. I love what he says to him right here. You'll just be Peter Pan. Cold, selfish man who drinks, drinks too much, too much. Who's obsessed with <laughs> success, and runs and hides from his wife and children. Because maybe that's what Hook was? I don't know, like... Oh, but all the kids after, believe in him. That's ah, awesome. I don't know if it's just, like, my uh, childhood or whatnot and seeing this movie growing up, but I could not picture uh, Captain Hook as anybody but uh, Dustin Hoffman. Hoffman. Because I'm, Dustin Hoffman is such a remarkable actor, and he plays this role. He immerses himself into this role so well. Like I say, like, there's there's no other role where he's, he's such a... A chameleon or whatever, where, where he just becomes the role so much as he does in this. And here's his Goku. Yeah, where he gives him again the he chance to live. He gives him the sword, and he betrays him too. By and here's the Frieza, where he slices him. Yeah, it's like which classic. does nothing. You should have just like jabbed his hook right straight through his forearm. Yeah, come on, it's hook. If you're really you into have that. To remember this. It is very well. It was sharp in the lot. beginning. Yeah. <laughs> this is really going to hurt. Um. Uh, again, since they're dancing around this huge set here, it's kind of fun because you can see that uh, over time, since Peter Pan's been gone, and the, it's the, funny the you say time the, because of the clocks. Ah, <laughs> the, I planned it. Um, <laughs> the, 
but the yeah, you can see the, the pirate town has spread you know and they, they've been encroaching into neverland and building this whole like pirate city it's not all yeah. just on the pirate ship yeah. anymore it's, and they make a town square out of, you know with a clock out of the alligator and of I, course that this this whole thing of making the alligator into a giant clock totally comes comes back to bite him uh, get it like, uh, it's a crocodile Thank oh my god! <laughs> hey, it was a wig. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> the funniest part because I've never seen D Dustin Hoffman with a more like balding look. Yeah. Like, this is just what he looks like good. nowadays. It has it's been twenty five years. Look, it doesn't even look like a bald cap. It's so awesome. It, it like, is. Hair is. The makeup thin, in the show is blonde. The makeup in the show holds up. It's really cool. Yeah, it is way ahead of its time. I <laughs> still wish. We're at a time like this, you guys. That's yeah. why he yeah. lost, because Smee Smee's not gone. there. He's... He runs out with, like, his pockets full of gold. Yeah. This is the equivalent of Hook him. shooting himself through the cheek. Wait, and... isn't, isn't Smee... I mean, uh, isn't... Yeah, Smee's bald as well, isn't he? No, he's got hair, doesn't he? I think he has hair, because he's in got male one, one single spot, you see uh, one, like, gray curl coming down the side of his face. Again, because And Smee it's the first time that I noticed one. it was when I watched <laughs> this. You see, like, one gray curl. That doesn't we're, mean that he's not balding. We're balding. this too deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, after the umpteenth time that you've seen the I'm show, you start reading into it. I'm just wondering if those are his real eyebrows. No. <laughs> well, Dustin Hoffman's? Oh, you bet. I don't know. Like, Actually, they probably made it out of the hair they shaved off of Robin Williams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how uh, uh, Glenn Close got all her hair. Oh, and that's how she became like Harry in her little cameo <laughs> yeah, in this. Exactly. It was all just off of Robin Williams. He supplied all the fake hair. <laughs> Dust perished Peter Pan. This actually really does have one of my favorite, like, killing lines in it, where they say, um, you know, death is the only adventure you have left. To die would be a great adventure. Death is the only adventure you have left. Yes. It's always been one of my favorite things. Oh, there goes the clock. I still don't understand how after I don't know how long it's been, but after all this time, this crocodile is still alive. I don't think it is still alive. Yeah. Like I, I've kind of wondered. Watch the eyes though. Like I'm pretty sure the <laughs> eyes like look down at him. Yeah. See, look at that. Is that what that's supposed to be? I just figured it just falls down because of scaffolding. Fell. And then the sound that it makes too. I just thought that was the sound of creaking because it's how so did, old and stiff. How did Hook get his name? <coughs> because where would he go? I uh, know the same way that Victor Von Doom became Doctor Doom in Fantastic oh. Four. Don't even get me started with that right now. That's <laughs> the end of Hook. Yeah, let's let's wait until the movie comes out before we judge it. But yeah, it sounds like it's gonna be stupid. I don't know. Like even I can't. <laughs> Doctor Doom as a hacker that goes by uh, the code name Doom. We all know any of these Marvel properties not made by Marvel are always going to suck. Except the X-Men are pretty good and back on track now. Yeah, the X-Men are pretty good. And the Deadpool movie oh. would be uh, good, but I don't know. I mean, right, the, just that the, trailer the, alone yeah. just got, got me uh, interested. I hope they're wearing their brown pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great lines. See, I would be uh, definitely afraid of that Hooray alligator for if it just ate somebody. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't the kids just decide to stay here? Oh, yeah, because Neverland makes you forget. But I think they figured out the trick to remembering is just to surround yourself with your loved ones, right? Yeah. I'm pretty so sure. So they fly and get the mom and Wendy, bring them all back, and now that Hook's gone, they, they can all have, like, a party and live, live forever, right? Yeah. It's, it's like, like, why does Dorothy go back to her dirt-farming aunt and uncle, you know, <laughs> when she could stay and help rule Oz? Well, she why, does go back to why, Oz. Why does Hitomi yeah. go back to high school in Escaflone instead of stay and be queen of Fonelia, you know? It's like... Why does Gohan, being the most powerful Saiyan there is after the Cell Saga, go into, you know, basically hibernation and goes to school? Because that his mother's because influence. Because she was stupid. Well, oh, he wasn't married, yeah. There's no uh, greater cause that they have to fight for so they rely on the things that they have available to. well it's like they i mean they've already solved all world problems thanks to the capsule corporations so yeah like, like do, 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 does the it. world really need another scientist chi chi no just let your son go be an awesome badass <laughs> just let Bill oh here's this great line i used to think this was super is. cheesy as a kid but i love how he kind of whispers at them or sends a psychic thing of like, oh, well, it's not yet. Okay, yes, it's using you. You're the pan. But when he says, you know, thank you for believing. And then like, oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, and again, like, choosing the new pan, who's it going to be? The most badass one that they have left now that Rufio is gone. The, the only thing one. that I would have changed in one. this. It's like Invader Zim, the almighty yeah. tallest. <laughs> that's all you need in order to be a leader. I think that nice, the nice, only nice. thing I would have changed about this part yeah. is not making the new pan. It's like, 
you're the next in the line to protect these people. Well, but but, uh, but, but, but I guess that's what Pan, the pan is. Yeah, you know? it's Peter, and I guess Pan would be like the title. Yeah, that's almost. that's why Peter Rufio was saying pan, I'm almost. the Pan now. Yeah. I guess I could have called him Rufio Pan, but... <laughs> Rufio Pan. <laughs> it just doesn't ro roll off the tongue. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have that Stan Lee alliteration. Right. <laughs> Peter Parker. I like how they still uh, the kept pan. the mark on his <laughs> left arm. Thud Pan. Yeah, Thud Pan. Thud Pan! Thud pan. Pan. Awesome. pan the Thud! <laughs> they should make, they should make a movie where, where uh, Jack comes back. Look at the kid. And he's grown up now, and he comes back, and Thud has taken over and rules Neverland with an iron fist. Right. <laughs> yeah. and an iron hook? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> and he has a symbol of hook. Somebody's been influenced by the spirit of James Hook. It's like the moment you become a pirate. You and just... he rides an alligator or a crocodile in the <laughs> It's um, like the never-ending awesome. story with a crocodile, and yeah. he's going to betray you and took. It's kind of his luck dragon. <laughs> Who's that kid? He looks like Vinny from Doogie House. There's Carrot Top! Carrot Top was in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably where they get all their props from. <laughs> right? They just like read it all. That's a great game. That kid's got all the best lines in this movie. Check it out! It's a diary Good for a Peter Pan that cares! <laughs> Oh, that's cool how it dissolves into the sky that they have painted on the bedroom. The mural in the ceiling. Yeah. And then he stumbles in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smelling like booze. I wonder if like the mural changed because Peter Pan went back and changed everything. That'd be really cool. Oh well, no, I mean, it's still there. You still see it around the walls of the room. It's just that that was way up on the ceiling. So minus minus the fact that it's all in black and gray now, or black wow. and white. But well, we just haven't seen it in close up. It's, I think this color's still there. Yeah, it's just really subtle. <laughs> it's not a close up, so yeah. I don't think that girl's ever cut her hair. It, like, goes down to her knees. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's totally cool. It's like my daughter's hair. It goes, like, down oh, okay. to her tailbone. Like, uh, the end of her tailbone. It's crazy. That's pretty cool. I bet it's a pain in the butt to brush at night, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Angelica Pickles just brushing her cat. You gotta do it, like, a hundred times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love Rugrats. I want to get an MP3 of the theme music. Thanks for reminding me. Moira looks yeah. down over the balcony. <laughs> so Peter! Yeah. Wake the hell up! What are you doing down there? What are you doing? <laughs> are you drinking again? <laughs> That's it. You're such a horrible father. I'm filing for you. divorce. <laughs> You're going to stay here with Grandma Wendy. <laughs> Go back to Neverland, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.